Okay, here we are, Ducks Don't Get Cold Feet, podcast number 16. Lucky enough to have Emma Hack here. And Emma, you are our third female. And <laughs> and not only that, you are the last person that will be having a podcast in this, let's say, micro studio. The How do you feel room. about that? I feel pretty good about it. Yeah, I'm here to do what I'm doing, so it's all good. Let's go. <laughs> so, so obviously, you know, there's no doubt you're wearing a pretty bright, um, dress today sure. and, and quite floral and I think well, that sun shining yes it's a beautiful day outside <laughs> I think when you look at your artwork there is a fair bit of nature a fair bit, a fair bit of floral in your artwork and it just sort of shines out so what I'm saying is that shines out on you today thank you so we, we might as well get stuck into it um going back to your early childhood Whereabouts, um, were, you, did, were you born in Adelaide or did we yeah, born Yeah, so I'm a Hills girl, grew up in Blackwood, Blair area and yeah, had a pretty chill childhood I guess, like surrounded by a bit of nature and lots of pets and animals and um, you know, watching the birds and hanging out in the garden and stuff like that. So I was very fortunate um, that mum and dad really nurtured I guess whatever I wanted to do so you know I was a pretty happy kid happy to sit in ha the corner and ha hang out yeah. <laughs> you <laughs> well, know <laughs> by myself a so lot you, in the beginning so you, before my brother came I, I've I've known how many how many were in your family so there's uh three siblings so my brother's two and a half years younger and then my sister's nine and a half years younger because one thing I've noticed is I, I'm I'm terrible at, at art like stick figures, I even had problems getting the right dimensions. So for me, it was something that I think I'm really creative, but putting that down onto paper, I, 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 you might look at it and go, well, that's kind of art trying to be nice to me or something like that. But I, I look at my daughter and I see what she's, she can do and, I, and she's five, uh, five and six. And, and I was like, man, she's really good, like, Maybe a little bit biased as well, but what she has done is amazing. Where where the hell does she get that from? Is anyone in your family got talent like you? Look, I I I truly believe that actually everybody is artistic, and um, it just depends on how you've been taught or what you've been taught to receive. So at the moment, I'm actually doing a lot of training in conditioned behaviour and understanding animal behaviour, and. Um, for me, I actually think that it's what people have tell you and what you take on as to whether you think you're good enough or not and then you might stop or become crap at it or whatever because you just don't believe in yourself. So right. I think, to be honest, that we are all creative. We all love finger painting. We all love painting. When we were kids, you know, we did it in kindergarten. So at what point was it that someone said, well, you're actually not that great at it, so maybe you shouldn't be doing it. And, <laughs> and that's as simple as that. Yeah, that's, I think that's so. That's how it starts. Well, I think so because even like at 12, like I was drawing a lot, but I went and did um, life drawing classes and I had a teacher that always told me what I did wrong and not what I did right. And so I actually stopped painting then. That was my the end of my art career until... Yeah. And um, how was that, at 12? Yeah, I was 12 when yeah. I went and did that course. So she wasn't a really great teacher. So <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> it wasn't very rewarding. Uh, Funny so, about that. <laughs> so yeah, I think, uh, to be quite honest with you, I think that can happen to anybody and people can be truly gifted and not really actually realise. But, I mean, art is in the eye of the beholder. I truly believe that. Um, and, you know, if you wanted to throw some paint on a canvas and call it art then it's art to you do you know what I mean and, so yeah and I think that's been shown with any piece of art in the world where some people flock to it and, and really get something from it because it's what they see and in the end it's like drinking wine the way I taste that wine is totally different to the way that you taste yeah, that wine. Yeah, correct. And the way people see colour is different as well. Like, yeah. I mean, there's a massive spe spectrum, but some people are very limited in the colour range that they can actually see. So when you look at a piece of art or I look at a piece of art, they would look totally different to each other as well, just even in colour range. Yeah, it's I when I go back to, if you go back to when you're 12 and you have someone saying no, 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 or negative, neg negative reinforcing, yeah. negative, it really does have an effect and it's, with young kids is sometimes in the mornings when we're trying to get ready, like you, you're for it, come on, Scarlett, do this, grab your jumper, grab this, grab that. And I, and I listen to myself sometimes and go, stop it. Like everything I'm saying is like, 
you yeah. know, a demand where it should, shouldn't be that hard. But Jesus, it feels that hard sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Find a chocolate dangled by the door. You get the, get all those steps done and you get that chocolate as you go through the door. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I completely understand that that would be, yeah, it's tricky, you know, and just to sort of step back and look at the way that you're teaching as a father as well, um, you know, can be confronting when you start understanding all this kind of stuff. So, yeah, it's cool. So how much into that is the psychology of the brain, is it? Or is that the psychology uh, of it's the just student? Attack, it's teaching. So yeah. I've actually, you know, to be quite honest, we were talking about art, but um, I'm actually training to be a dog trainer So at the moment, which is not in any bio whatsoever. Well, I it's think a you're new the thing. president of the Bernese Mountain Dog Club. <laughs> yeah, okay, well, that's sort of like maybe says something. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no, I love I love animals, and um, yeah, I've just been fascinated. I guess being stuck in COVID, like you know, we can't do like half my business closed down. Yeah. You know, like I was doing so much overseas. So um, yeah, and it was actually before that that I was starting to do dog training. So yeah, I just started really learning everything while I was in lockdown. <laughs> so with the um, or our know, lockdown. what's that? With, there's got to be a name for giving a treat for something that's done. It's well. positive reinforcement. Positive reinforcement. Yeah. So if if you carry that on to a human. Correct. Like, should I be carrying, like, little jelly beans in my pocket for my girls? Or? Well, I mean, you could also <laughs> use compliments, yep. you know. So, I mean, it doesn't have to be, like, you're feeding them continuously. It could be, like, a pat on the head or maybe not for <laughs> maybe not for um, children, yep. um, but a pat on the back or, like, telling them something they do great or just something that, that they look great today or, like, you know, they like the way that they spoke to that person you thought that was really quite mature and, you know, whatever. So find nice compliments. And I, and I think there's no doubt that everyone has had a boss of some description telling them everything they've done wrong when they've really forgotten about all the things that you do right yeah yeah and and as a human I think we take it we take into the consideration oh that's not 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 and you got to stop and look at all the good things that are happening and don't focus on the negatives and that's exactly what you're saying I don't think there's enough of that yeah and positive reinforcement could be a get together or a catch-up or a gift or yeah. um, an award or yeah. something like that, you know, like those kind of things that are really relevant, I think, in business today. I mean, my sister works for a big advertising agency and they just run ragged at the moment. Like she's just really pulling the hours and, you know, they gifted her a very fancy restaurants, um, you go make at home kind of meals or something and it was yeah. just like it was to last the week. Yeah. So it was wouldn't been cheap and they sent it to all of their staff and that's like a big thank you, you know, because you're sitting there eating it every night going, oh, it's really – beautiful experience yeah. because um, it's a very expensive restaurant and it's you know, fancy and hard to get into. So it's really, yeah, yeah that's I mean massive reward for all the pain that they're going through at the moment, I think. So, yeah, those kind of things are really like important in life. So you're, get, you're carrying this over into the dog training. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> I don't know what it's got to do with that. Yeah, well, it's the same, it's the same <laughs> style, like, you know, Mountain Dog Club of SA. Yeah, so, so this, yeah, I have a burner. <laughs> She's beautiful. Her name's Hildy. Uh, I got her What's her name? Hildy. Hildy. Yeah, okay, Hildy. So, so, well, I call her little <laughs> Not little. <laughs> Probably like 50 kilos. Yeah. Oh, she's just under 50. Yeah, she's about 40, 46. She's <laughs> she's gorgeous. My other girl's bigger. But I think, um, you know, like the dogs sort of make you sort of sit back and realise, you know, I don't know, the care and stuff. But, I mean, I sort of think like people go, oh, why are you doing dog training now? And I sort of think like, you know, when you're a kid and people say to you, uh, what do you want to do when you're older and stuff like that? And I always wanted to work with animals. So I thought a vet, you know, like. That's the only thing we can yeah. do with animals back in the 70s. Yep. Um, okay. And, yeah, and so basically I think with that side of it, I didn't want to be a vet because I don't want to put animals down, but, like, I always wanted to work with animals and then sort of come round. So if you see my art, there's animals in my art. It's about nature, it's about the environment and all that kind of stuff. So um, that was sort of, I guess, the beginning of loving them and then finally I get myself a dog for the first time. Oh, then you become changes. the president of the then club. I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 and you're, you're obviously what it, would it be an aspiring, world. you're an inspiring instructor. Yeah, inspiring instructor, yeah. So. so that's so cool. Yeah, it's well, good. It's a good thing. So, so if you go back to when you first, did did you have a, did anyone around you realise, oh, you know, there's a bit of style in your art or did, did anything show up in an early age when you were a child or, um, or was it worked upon and developed? I Look, oh, I don't know like how much you can say my work's developed. I sort of just do what I sort of feel. I don't like to plan much about what I do. I sort of just go with whatever I feel 
on the day a lot of the time. Um, I'm not the artist. Like I do my research over how much time leading up to an exhibition, but I'm not like I won't put things down like in front of me as such, you know, it's all just sort of in my mind and what I might have seen or whatever that I want to sort of reference to. But I think um, it's an organic experience with my art. So, yeah, I've just sort of gone with the flow really. Well, a, a great, it a great example of that is the Motor Accident Commission yeah, ad that you did. that wasn't going with the flow. That was really hard. And that looked, so I've, I've went and watched the video for that, yeah. and that looked extremely hard to put together. But you went to, a, to, the, to the effort. You had to pick the right actors that yeah. played the right part. You had gymnasts at the front because they were tiny and agile. You had bigger dudes at the back, and you sculptured a front of a car which was made out of people. So if yeah. any, I will play the clip on here so you can see okay, it. Okay, cool. And, and when you see that, you're like, you could see you lining up. And I, I was watching that thinking, how the hell did you piece that together? Oh. Yeah, I kind of <laughs> still look at it and think the same thing. Um, <laughs> it's, yeah, I, sometimes things come to you when you feel bold. And I was feeling like I think I was felt quite bold during that phase like I'd just done the Gautier thing things were kind of flowing I was getting some nice big jobs and and it hadn't been done before at all um around the same time actually someone painted somebody like a person riding a motorbike which was two people with a motorbike and that was actually done pretty much coincide coinciding at exactly the same time and then when they were released at the same time so that hasn't actually been happen happened before um I'm trying to remember uh Trina Mary is the artist. Um, yeah, and we met at the World Body Painting Championships and I said, when did you do that? And we literally did it a week apart from each other and never been done before. So we both thought we were first people but we were pretty much doing it at the same time. Um, but, yeah, so the sculpture of bodies, uh, I guess it sort of came from um, Dali did the one with the nude humans as a skull. I don't know if you've ever yes. seen that piece. Yeah. So, um, and it was just a photographic work that he set up and styled. I can't remember who shot it. Maybe it was Man Ray. I can't remember. Anyway, so, um, yeah, I sort of like wanted to sculpt and then paint something on the people. But that sort of, that was an idea in the back of my head even before the um, Matt came to me, like the advertising agency also came to me. Um, Cleminger BBDO came to me and basically said, can you do this? And I'm like, well, let's just give it a go. Confidence was high. Yeah. So, yeah. And, like, being an artist is a risk-taking business, you know. Oh. Like, it's not, you know, you put your heart out on the line and hope that people love it, you know, yeah. enough to put it on their walls. And it can be heartbreaking because of that as well. So you do have to have balls, as it were, to yeah. do it, I think. Oh. You know, really get out there with it. Oh. Uh, totally, and and in the end, it's like that. It's what someone thinks of it as well, and that was created for an ad. That was a mass ad. It was probably a national, or it's definitely uh, South, yeah, Australian it was South Australian campaign. ad about that we're all part of accidents. So, so, if you, like accidents so, happen. so how? So I didn't get it. Were you drawing much at a certain age, or when did things? Oh, yeah, when okay. did things so start to? to when did things start to rock and roll? Like, uh, when, no, I just drew. Like yeah. I just sat and drew when I was draw a kid. or paint. Or both? Both, Are you whatever. A bit of everything? Yep. Yeah, I don't really have anything from those times. Do you have anything? What's your earliest picture or piece that you have that you've kept that you did? Probably like when I was like 15 or 16. And I think, you know, but I was always like I'd do my homework. Like I, I'd actually draw on my homework and then do my homework around the drawing and then like, yeah, last minute finish the actual homework when I'm meant to be, you know, doing that rather than drawing. So... Um, yeah, I, I was sketching and playing with things and ideas. I never thought I was any good, you know. No one ever does. No, I, no as an I artist, still I don't. don't. Think so. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> so, so what was the first major thing that you did in regards to uh, your career? Uh, did you ever work at like McDonald's or? Oh yeah, I worked. I was working. Like it's got nothing to do with my career oh, as such. Fine. Though it's yeah. like my working career. Yeah. I worked at Pizza Hut. Was my first job. I went at Sizzler. Oh, Sizzler. Did, when it how opened much? in Darlington. I was one of the first crew working on that one. Oh, my God. And how much bread did you, the um, French bread, did you eat at Sizzler? Oh, yeah, that parmesan bread was oh, really good, right? Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. but, I mean, working for those companies is actually good because they sort of, you know, Americanized companies, they're a real structured kind of way of working and learning, um, I think, you know, and 
yeah, so it sort of set me up for working for people and then I never worked for anyone else again pretty much. At what age? <laughs> <laughs> I was it's a kid. A, I was like yeah. 15. Yeah, see? Yeah. So, it's, so it's, they're, they're it takes good. something to make that. Did you have a conscious thing that, ah, uh, I think I want to work for myself? Or did no. you? No. 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 I don't know. I never, well, my dad's sort of an entrepreneur as well. So I sort of think that he always worked for himself. And I guess I just saw that and thought that was just normal to do that. So for me, I studied makeup artistry when I finished school. Okay. And then um, through that went into the body painting and then started my makeup career and then the art sort of oh. flowed on from that. So most of my makeup career, obviously, I, was, I did go and work for a studio, I think, for I was there for a couple of months. But I what happens like in a studio? And, so what happens with the work? So you yeah, remember the glamour studios, you know, like you know, they wrap them in the material? No. How old are you? Yeah. You know I'm, me? I'm 45. Yeah, you should know the glamour yeah. studio. Do you remember I, Studio I've Vogue? I've lived a sheltered life. Do you remember Studio Vogue? Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, you do. Right, okay. So they used to wrap material around people here and gloss them all up and then the big hair. And okay, the, yeah, right, I'm, I'm with you. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I used to work for <laughs> one of those studios. I did a little bit with Studio Vogue as the... Freelancer, um, but yeah, preferred just freelance work really. So you, I think what from what I've I've researched, what what got you started was your body art, and then you sort of became a bit of a global thing from body art. I mean, you just mentioned that you're in a world championship. Yeah, so, I so did there's the, a body I art world, world championship. Champ- yeah. <laughs> oh no, that was, I was judging that one, but this other one I did was back in nineteen. Oh God, two thousand and one. Yeah. I think it's 2001. Is it there? Yeah. Good. In, well, yeah, what, <laughs> That's my brain. <laughs> one, one of your first exhibitions that we've you got. You probably weren't even born then. <laughs> what, no, he wasn't. <laughs> Don't worry. He wasn't. What, one of your first exhibitions that you did um, that we've got was in 1999 yeah. uh, through Australia. Yeah. So that was like a calendar that I put together. So basically I was working as a hair and makeup artist, really loved the body painting, uh, entered a few competitions, won them, um, and then – I guess sort of continued wanting to do body painting. Clearly there was no market for it. So I just decided to put together a calendar in 99. So I worked in the club scene. I was doing um, promotions, put together body art dance shows, fashion parades, production. So I've sort of been through the whole everything lot. really, a lot of things. And then at the same time running my hair and makeup business, which was weddings, fashion, photography, like fashion work, um, Oh, portfolio, whatever. And so, yeah, the body painting kind of thing sort of started with working with a couple of photographers that I knew and I'd just say, oh, can we just do a body yeah, painting shoot? And, of course, they were like, yeah, sure, let's do a body painting shoot. Yeah. And so, you know, we'd stay up all night and paint somebody and then photograph them and then head to work for the next day or whatever. So um, so that was kind of fun, but then I wanted to do the calendar. So in 99 I created the calendar um, and I just basically had, like, no money at all and... <laughs> God. And yeah, it was crazy. And then at the last minute, the printer pulled out. And then. Um, so this is a legit ca- calendar? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was a calendar. I did four calendars, actually. I probably gave you the like brief bio of me. But yeah, there's a there's a really long, long story behind oh, no. all the body painting. But anyway, yeah, like, no, yeah. No, we can, we so can the, jump so for the it. Calendar, it yeah. So the calendar was, uh, it was all based around themes. And look, you know, at the end of the day, it was like a real waste of money, but not a waste of money. <laughs> uh, because if I didn't do it, I wouldn't be where I am now. So uh, basically from doing that, I got the Paralympic calendar the following le- year. I did a Celebrity Chef's Unpeeled calendar with Dorinda Hafner. She'd get on TV with Bert Newton in the morning and say, hey, do you want to be part of this calendar? It's for raising money for kids. And so they'd have to say yes. Yeah. And uh, and so, yeah, we had, like, you know, Jeff Jantz and Gabriel Gatte and Stephanie Alexander, Maggie Beer, you name it. They all, yeah, you know, it was Chef hilarious. Jason so before, Roberts. Yeah, I did. Yeah, he Jason. He has been him. in this room. Uh, has he? We have good oh, friends with Jason. He's a sweetie. Yeah. So, so that's how we saw, we, saw, we saw a photo. That was another link to come. Yeah. Into you was yeah, Jason. that was like, shot at the market, oh God, Central Market here, Jason. actually. Yeah. See? So, yes, yes. So, did that and then I did a yoga calendar and that was it for the calendar thing. Um, <laughs> but the calendar, the idea behind the calendar was I always wanted to do the Pirelli calendar because I collected the Pirelli calendar yep. throughout the 90s. It was a big thing then. Um, 
but yeah, it wasn't such a big thing at the end of me finishing it, I guess. Like, you know, everything went digital then, so it was pointless. So you sort of got out of it at the right time, let's face yeah, it. Yeah, but like it was, you know, the, the calendars allowed me to explore a portfolio of creative just creating for the fun of it. I was working with a whole lot of other photographers and then during that time I sort of decided to create my first like uh, artistic exhibition which is 2002. I did that with one of the photographers I was working with at the time, Shane Reid. And I did a cabaret um, exhibition with the Cabaret Festival uh, with the whole cabaret performance and then 2007 I started photographing my own work. So with regards to body paint, you obviously you, you can paint someone, but you were you when did you get to the idea of having the piece painted and then fitting the, yeah, the okay. fitting the talent yeah. into it? Did that I'm assuming that just doesn't happen. Well does no. it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just had so like well there's always like yeah, it, there's always something in my mind of when like new ideas yeah, and just finding right time to create those new ideas is the key. So I think for me, uh, I saw in the early 2000s, I think it's 2001, I think I saw uh, Veronica, uh, uh, what's her name? Varishka. Varishka, she is like um, a model who used to body paint herself into rustic walls and backgrounds, some of the oldest works that you'll see of people camouflaged into backgrounds. And I saw her work and I was like, oh, cool, that's really great, but I don't want to do rustic walls and backgrounds. That one's been done anyway. She's done it. It's pointless yep. recreating. So I don't really was... like recreating other people's ideas. It's not my bag. Good. So, um, yeah, so I sort of had that in the back of my mind. And then in 2005 I walked into a homeware store and I saw the wallpapers of Florence Broadhurst on the wall. And yep. it's that one called Bird of Paradise. It's beautiful. It's like big roses with these birds and... It was hot pink. It was gorgeous. And I said to the owner at the time, Jackie, who I knew, oh, have you got any more of this wallpaper? And she handed me a couple of different <laughs> wallpapers from the same designer that she had leftovers. And I went into the studio and started painting people into it. And that's how it happened. So so the idea I, was there for yeah, about four you years, but finding talk, the right talk, thing, you know, yeah. like the right, it was just like a light bulb. That and that's off. that's what that's what patterned you into it. That's like you could could you see something in it, thinking I can relay that onto a human body. How do I? Or was it? No, that's the right. The no, that's right. how I can blend someone. Yeah, that's just it. So that's it. Yeah, so that's how that happened. And it was like the lot. The first one took nineteen hours. It should be enough to bloody. <laughs> that should <laughs> I mean, be never enough want to, to do quit. it again. <laughs> But yeah, I went back and so just someone kept on doing it someone was much. there for nineteen hours. Mm. No, stop mm. it. Yeah, what's that she piece was called? Lollies at me by what? the end of it. <laughs> uh, I actually created two pieces oh, okay. uh, out on that night. I cre- it's one's called Wallpaper One, and the other one is Wallpaper I Geisha. See it. Oh, so so I think up. I did the Wallpaper One first, and then I turned her into the Geisha. So two shots in one day, as you do. Yeah. Why not? Why not? You're just yeah. you're there. You might as well be committed. Yeah, <laughs> it's quite. I finished her legs. I may as well keep yeah. on going. <laughs> it's quite in um Longest in depth thing. with the, like uh, what's the, not the word like it's um quite detailed to the stage where you, you know you actually have to look twice to see that there's a person there. Yeah, uh, and I'm assuming that's the whole point. Well, yes, life is not as it seems sometimes, right? Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> is that the back up backlog to that? It's a bit is of that- it. Yeah, there's a bit of everything sort of thrown in there. I mean, um, also at the time I was pretty sick of the shape of the human form. I was body painting someone and restricted within the shape. So being able to paint someone and lose that shape is kind of cool, lose the edges of the human. Um, So that was good and I created sort of shapes within it. Like if you have a look at the wallpaper one, if you Google it, it'll probably come up. Uh, Um, The red um one. It's, um, yeah, it is. Like this pans. is the one I'm looking at. Yeah, so I sort of sculpted. I re-sculpted the human form out of it. No, nah, not that no, one. Not that yeah. one? Oh. No, that's because that that's pretty full on. Yeah, that's gorgeous. That piece is beautiful. So um, that's more recent. That's 2015. I don't know if you can see that one. If you go into my old website, you'll find the Emma Hacker Artist website. You'll see every single collection I've created, and that will. Yeah, you, Emma Hack <laughs> you'll have a giggle at that. Emma, that's, Emma yeah. yeah, that's the one. It's my been, old site. That's so. the one we've been. Oh, oh okay, cool. Yeah. yeah, so go into collections and just run down the bottom, and you'll find uh, wallpaper will be in there. Oh, There's some cows in that. there. So with the cows story, while we're on it, so are we on the cows now? I've, yeah. Okay. Oh, 
Because when you're talking <laughs> about it's not all as it seems. Yeah. And the cow's piece, you do it like a jigsaw or you have a piece in the, the art that's reversed to yeah. what's behind it. Is that the same sort of style as uh, you're going with? I mean, it's obviously a whole piece and there's no person and there's no body art. But No, I just wanted to do something different. <laughs> I want okay, to paint some enough. cows in a field. Yeah. I thought I had this idea. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I was a bit Dali, isn't it? So, like, I really love Dali, as we sort of mentioned before. Yep. So, yeah, it's surreal. So, yeah, I kind of, yeah. Wallpaper Got some cows and whacked them in a field and hoped they'd stand still. That was quite funny. Yeah, before that, that one. Done. So it's before even before that one. That one. Yeah. All right, we'll get to it. But yeah, just before that. Moral one. of the story, I think it takes a pretty – pretty amazing thought pattern to be able to do stuff like that it's it's incredible oh, thanks i yeah and the fact that you sit there and go yeah let's do that what can you remember the time like were you sitting there at home like having a few drinks go oh let's come up with this or no i never i actually don't get creative drinking no it gets nah, worse i get drunk drinking so uh, <laughs> that's what it's some for. artists like to paint drunk. I couldn't think of anything worse. <laughs> so I'm always straight when I'm drinking. <laughs> uh, when I'm sorry, when I'm, when I'm painting. So yeah, I just I don't like to cloud my mind. To be honest, like when I'm working. So so, so you do the piece, um, then you started taking photos. What did it? Did the photos come after? Or yeah, was that yeah, all part yeah, yeah, of the sure. process, Yeah, yeah, sure. So, like, right? I was working with photographers day to day anyway, doing my hair and makeup for fashion shoots and stuff. So um, I had big respect for their craft and that they'd learnt their craft over many years and all the thing. And so I was sort of being respectful of that, didn't want to just walk in and start shooting my work. I sort of thought, felt like mm, ro- oh. a little bit wrong and maybe a little bit incompetent doing it like that. Yeah. But... Um, but there's a amazing photographer here based here called Andrew Dunbar. He passed away a couple of years ago. And basically he was shooting some of my work and I went into the studio for him to shoot my work this one day and he basically said, I'm not photographing this today. You're going to photograph it. You're an artist. You've created this. All I'm doing is pressing a button. I'm going to show you how to do it. So he showed me how to do it. And But now I always have an assistant because it's too... For me, like to paint for hours and hours on end, I need that somebody else's eyes at the end of it because I'm super tired. Yeah. Um, so I still photograph my work, but I get somebody else to set that up while I'm working and stuff like that. So, but I know what I want and direct what I want. So yeah, and it's easier photographing it myself than standing behind someone going, "Oh, photograph that, photograph that. Oh, move a little bit this way, move a little bit this way." You know. So, and that's what it was kind of like in the beginning, you know. So yeah, it seems funny now, but for me, yeah, yeah I sort of feel. Yeah. Like you shouldn't. Like, ah, oh, hang on. Uh, should I really? Should I be telling someone how I want this? No, uh, no. It's a time could, saving no, me- wasn't measure. No, I shouldn't. It? Like, I definitely felt I should because yeah. it's my work. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I guess in the photography, like, I don't even own a camera. You know, I still hire everything now. So, yeah. you know, I'm always hiring. What's well, I mean, I only probably shoot once a year now. So, whereas before, I was probably doing three collections, three to four collections a year. So, yeah. So in, in regards to collections, yes. um, you've had um, work and we've probably you know, the US, the UK, Europe, Asia, you know, where you're actually, you're a big name. I've been everywhere. Yeah, you've been everywhere. <laughs> um, your sole exhibitions in Hong Kong and Seoul. What's the difference between those ex- solo exhibitions? Yeah. Compared, what's, the, what's the difference between those and your other exhibitions around the world? Is that... Well, they're all the same work. Okay. So, but different things will sell in different places. And you could say the same even for Australia, from Perth to Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, everything sells differently in each state. So you can never really, I don't really create for an audience. I just create what I feel like creating um, or what I want to, like, I mean, you'll see there's a lot of Orientalisms in my work and that was mainly because I was selling in Asia. So... And I just was surrounded by this beautiful yeah. Asian art all the time, so it inspired me to create. It wasn't just for that market like as such. The, the blossoms and that, that and the, the yeah. wallpaper series and as the well. And the collection and things like that. So, yeah. So for me, I just sort of created with what I loved, really, more than anything. And then – but you'd pick what pieces would go to what country because, like, you know, it costs yeah. a lot to send things <laughs> to places. So, I mean, Seoul was a full retrospective from 10 years of work, I think. 
10, 20. I can't remember. Yeah. And yeah. Did, <laughs> and with your the, the wallpaper series, because mm. that was photographed as well. Correct. So you took those pieces around as well? Were they part of that, those yeah, series? Yeah, so they or, went... They I'm went, assuming they had to be. Yeah, 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 yeah. So basically the wallpapers, they're Florence Broadhurst background. So I hang the wallpaper, the model stands in front of that, set up camera, and that's my viewpoint. It doesn't move. I look through camera, run over and paint a line on the skin, come back, make sure it lines up, run backwards and forwards until the model's completely body painted to match, yeah. and then I photograph. Yeah. So that's how I create my work. But um, the wallpapers were the beginning of blends, like what I call the blend, camouflage. And then, uh, so I started that in 2005 and then worked through that 2015 was the last wallpapers that I've done. So, um, Okay, so it's, what, seven, five years ago, five years ago? Yeah, yeah. Wow. So, so, so you, I wasn't going to go back in 2010 either. That was really actually giving me the last collection. And then I got offered to go into the archive of Florence Broadhurst and pick pieces that I wanted and do my own colourways. And so I was like, yeah, all right, I'll do that. So. Well, that's that's a but, that's a big honour. Yeah, her archive's now been sold. So <sighs> yeah, it's working with a different company now, and I'd sort of, I don't know, you know, I, I, the people that <laughs> did own the Broadhurst archive really helped me a lot in the beginning and allowed me to work with her archive, which is unique, and no one else has been really allowed to do that. So as an art, as an artist, so for me it was a big thing. And like I feel quite loyal to them because of it. With the the pieces that you do, I'm assuming they take uh, they take what sort of time frame? What's you know, is there? You know, I'm, I'm assuming you don't obviously go. I'm just going to well, take five hours. Well, nineteen hours was the yeah, first. So that's so but is on that average like normal it's, like for yeah. It's, on average, it's about like um, twelve to fifteen. But you've already hours. pre-done the wall, so you've already got the. I painted the wall, wall. or the walls wallpaper. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, and then you get. And then I paint someone for that Yeah, then you paint someone. Yeah. yeah. Well, so they all. stand in front of it all day, pretty much. Well, it's fair to say that <laughs> that put you right on the map. Yeah, I think so. Uh, yeah. Like, do you think that's a pivotal point in your career? Yeah, I like, think maybe always... I'll be appreciated more when I'm dead or like another 20 <laughs> years or something. But yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, it's a big thing. Like, when you think about it, you know, even the Gautier thing, like, you'll get into that, I'm sure. But like, that piece is iconic artwork that was you know, I think, yeah, anyway, I think that's sort of like one of those things. But you look at it like, what you're looking at it like, hey, you know, I'm just doing like what I love. Uh, you don't look at it as like, yeah, this is really good. You're sort of playing it down a bit. <laughs> I, 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 I reckon you are so playing it down a bit. I mean, well, uh, it's, it's Yeah, there's impressive. big things I've done. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very it, impressive. It's, it's to be. I don't right. know. You sort of have these goals. Like, you'd probably. Look, you're the yeah. kind of guy that would have goals, yeah. right? So I sort of feel like I haven't done it all yet. I feel like I've done that. And then I'm not sure what's going to come next. But yeah. And I just also, you know, you look at. I don't know. There's a real insecurity in the art world about your peers and all that kind of stuff. So that, you know, getting into that side of it, you know, like I'm, you know, I'm not collected by the South Australian Art Gallery yet or yeah, anything see, like that. This so is the sort of things stuff Things like that, that still get to you as uh, an artist. Uh, you sort of think, well, I've done all this, but really am I that great unless that happens? In my own hometown, can't yeah, you even think, recognize yeah, right? that. So then I just okay, have to keep on trying, right? right? See, that's a, see, that's a different yeah. way of looking at it. I, yeah, so you sort of feel like you're just climbing, but you're never quite getting there. Whereas you go, oh, my God, you've done blah, 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 which I have. I know that. And I think it's great. But... Yeah. There's still other uh, things I have not achieved. And this yet. is a sort of th this is <laughs> hey, someone's listening to this, buddy. Let's start. Let's start a movement <laughs> because the work is so impressive. I I think everyone likes something. Whether you know they might like a black wall, whatever whatever it is, that might be something that triggers. I think if I you I go into stars, I like um I like a street style. Like I like pop art, sort of. Yeah. You know, I did a pop art one. Did you see that one? No, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> someone have a look at it because I haven't seen you do a pop art. You do a lot of from what I've watched of yours. Twelve. I want to see it because I I, yeah, I, I like bold and, sort of yeah. pieces. I love I love my street art. I think yeah. we had Joel. We we've um, Joel just did a piece on one of our fans. Okay, yeah, he's lovely, and he is so cool. Yeah, we want him to come heart. and do a podcast. So I think we're locking him in. Yeah, good. Um, but. I think our, our talent here in SA is amazing and it needs to be showcased. And 
uh, it's more more importantly, owned by South Australians. Like, yeah, I, I d- well, lots of South Australians own my word. Don't uh, worry about oh, that. Okay. That's good. <laughs> that and, and, side and of it's super good. The, and <laughs> f- for me, do you have a style other <laughs> than what you paint? Because for me, I see you paint lots of nature. Uh, you like owls. Um, <laughs> you like painting um, birds as well, and and being a nature. And you know what you're saying yeah. as a kid. These were the things that were just there. Makes sense. Like, you know, that this is what you like doing now. Yeah, sure. Um, you know, if I threw you on a deserted island and said, okay, here's here's a pen and paper of pen. So here's a, <laughs> so here's a paint and some canvases. Here's a person. Yeah. And then, <laughs> <laughs> oh, a friend to play with. <laughs> Yay. Uh, yeah, this could be your uh, person taking the photos. Like, what, what would you, do you think you'd, you'd be, uh, you'd come up with something different because of your surrounding? Or, well, it would still be nature, though, wouldn't it? I'd be on Bloody Island. Yeah, correct. <laughs> yeah, correct. It's hopefully not Gilligan's Island or anything yeah. like that. But, but do you think you'd come up with something um, different yeah, than look, what your Yeah, I mean, if you look at my is- collections, like they do change and evolve depending on where I've travelled. So a lot of them, you know, you'll see there's um, the Treasure Tile collection was when I, you know, went to Spain and Portugal. There's, and just for the record, you have yeah. a lot of collections. Yeah, like, yeah. And when you say, have you looked at them? I think we've looked at yeah. every single thing on your website. But it's so. hard to sort of like yeah, process each one. Like, yeah. So if you have, <laughs> take, take some time, have a little wander through because like, it's interesting. Like it's not just the wallpapers or it's not just people holding birds. There's lots of things I play with. Uh, I've created ceramic works as well, which are beautiful, uh, multi-layered works. And then my last few collections are very my last collection was really about sculptured form, like more working with sculptured body form and the geometric collection is really different as well, which I love. So, so what yeah. hits home for when you to make your decision on what direction I'm oh. taking? Or do, you, do you pick something up every year or you Well, I try it? to. This year I actually haven't created. I've just had a year off. Let it go? Well, I just I started selling my work and like just travelling all the time and when you do that, almost once a month or every six weeks or something. You're just kind of tired yeah. and a bit burnt out from um, life. And also from that, no, I've just even from the art world, you know, like it sort of burns you out a bit selling your own work because a lot of the time, well, sometimes I know it's you who's the artist yeah. because I think you're just the gallerist. Yeah. <laughs> so you hear everything That's cool. and it's probably a bit too much sometimes. Yeah. So like, yeah, I think I take everything to heart a lot, but I'm, good at selling my own work so I don't know where that balance is at the moment clearly I've been basically given a break to try and work out what I do next and whether I go back into doing the art fairs and stuff and I'm kind of feeling maybe I don't go back into the art fairs because I think it's sort of a bit soul destroying so I've got a question then I've got to sell my work somehow so well you got online the gallery system's really hard work so what do you like doing what do you love doing the most? I'm playing with dogs at the moment. Okay, quite honestly. So, with you. so that makes it, so that makes it so <laughs> yeah. so easy because you should just flow with what you feel. Yeah. So I mean, I mean my art's always going to sit there. I just don't think it's going to be like a massive dominant thing. And then when I create, it will be a really special thing when I create, right? Yeah. So, definitely. And I think because I've almost overcreated their edition works, I've got so much available still. Yeah. And when I create new work, most people still like the old work more than the new work because that's what they're used to. <laughs> it they takes used to a while to get used to. With it, blah, blah, blah. And then you die and it's worth a lot. Yeah. Or I fake my own death <laughs> and go and live on that tropical <laughs> island and reap the benefits on my tropical island. All right. So, <laughs> but the, the frightening thing, that's what happens. Yeah, well, I'm kind of thinking about doing it anyway, but don't tell anyone, right? <laughs> All right. <laughs> It's okay. Might just disappear at 60. <laughs> we'll, we'll keep it quiet. And then there'll be archive works that, oh, she had them hidden for years. She created that years ago. But there'll be new works of Tropical Island things. Uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, she talked about that on Ducks Don't uh, Yeah, no, oh my goodness. There's a, there's a record of that. Are you sure she's not on Tropical Island? Yeah. So, so hmm. with um, artwork, uh, you have your website that... You do have pieces for sale on it? Yeah, I do. Yeah. yeah. Is, do you get many sales from people looking online and, or inquiries? Most of the people bought buy my work have seen it on a wall somewhere at some point. Like yeah. I think when you look at digital works online, they're very flat. It's yeah, not the way totally. it is. It's yeah. really super hard to be able to sell something that, um, you know, is just a, a digital picture, which it is a digital picture 
work at the end of the day. Yeah. But when it's framed beautifully and it's printed on a yeah. gorgeous picture and you've just got that luminosity or the luminosity. Subtlety. Oh my oh, god, that's a that nice is, word, isn't I it? freaking love that word. That yeah, is awesome. One. I haven't heard that. That's a good one. That's um, it. Luminosity. Or the nice texture of paper or you know, whatever and then how the colours read on that. Because your screen's calibrated for you, my screen's calibrated for me, colour wise, whatever. It's dark or light or whatever it doesn't really show it the way i intend it to be seen except for on a wall so that kind of thing's always a little bit tricky and you know if the work's eight thousand dollars then you want to just make sure that it's well, it's got to be like going to look good, but it's when people be... get it, they're like, "Oh my god, it's so amazing! It's better than I thought it would look because they've only seen it on the screen." So that's hard. Um, but most people that are buying my work online now have seen me at art fairs or whatever, yeah. um, and are really fluffing their homes at the moment because they're stuck there. Have you noticed <laughs> an increase? In the I did in the in beginning, the... Yeah. like especially in America. Like in the beginning, yes, but it's dropped off a lot now. I think there's a lot of. Um, there's less hope I feel in America at the moment, unfortunately, yeah, which I, is just awful. Um, but yeah, look, art's the first thing to go. And when you look at, I always watch politics because that will affect my art market of where I go and what I do next. So it's really kind of, it's, how, it's sorry. Yeah. Can you can you talk me through that? How do you how does politics affect art you, sales? Yeah. Well, it's whether the market feels confident or not to buy something that's going to be okay. expensive. Right? Okay. So public sentiment. Is, mm. is a big driver. Mm. With I mean, my, my weight doesn't go down in price. It always goes up in price. Like even if the market's hard, I still put like, you know, when we went through um, GFC last, yeah. I put my prices up every year as I normally do. I yeah. didn't change anything. The oh, that's a hint. If you want to buy something of Emma, buy it now because yeah. next year it's going to be Well, more. people like, you know, wanted to buy work five years ago, like now say to me, oh, I wish I did. And I said, well, do it now because in another five years it'll be more than what you can afford now. So, <laughs> so yeah. that is the best. Like if that's not the sound of a good stock, what is? <laughs> like, oh, my God. Like, yeah, and I control everything now. So I don't really – there's a couple of galleries that still show my work, but they don't represent me. I represent myself now. So I can control all of that. I control my resales. I don't let them go to secondary market. I put the secondary market back through myself. So yep. if someone – has got a piece that's sold out um, and I know I can like move it or I'll try and move it for them. So they, it sells for appropriate price because if it goes to an auction house or something, then it can devalue my work if it doesn't sell for okay. as much, right? Yeah, I get so, it. Yeah. Yeah, see, so I sell it for current value for my clients that have that own the work. I'd rather than be honest and just say, look, I'm sorry, I'm going to get rid of your work. I don't feel it anymore. Or, you know, I'm, yeah. you know my mum died and she yeah. gave me the piece that I want to sell it or whatever. Um, then, yeah, I've, you know, there's a certain amount of people that want pieces. Yeah. So there's with... some famous ones that people really, really want. So then I sell it for them. So your pieces, if you were to buy, how many of them are original art, print, or, you know, is it because they're all different because some are painted, some are photo, some are both. They're all photographs. So, so I don't sell my paintings. So not at all? No, nah, I s- destroy them because they're not the piece. The piece is the person in front of it. Yeah, that's I a get photograph. that. That's, so they're not even the somewhere fun. in this This. Oh, when there's we a couple like in my dead. storage. Yeah, you can okay. pull that when I'm dead. But they're not good. Like, you know, <laughs> we, we need to like... figure out where these are. Um, <laughs> just, just hopefully Emma doesn't go yeah, missing after this podcast. Yeah, just in my storage with everything else, you know. <laughs> but, so much storage. I just made four trucks into a new home. It's like a ridiculous amount of stuff. But but hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. You've got me here. So the, the cow, the cow... That's a painting, is it not? Or... Oh, no, that's on location. So the background, which show me your cow. Really? What cow are you looking at? Here. Yeah, that's like, that's grass. That's grass and sky. He's hanging in it. He's hanging. <laughs> he's, he's, he's hanging in the, a field, He's dog. on the freaking ground. He's standing on the ground. There's a shadow there. Yeah. It's a cow in, okay. in a pasture. Shit, I thought that was, that's a painting. No, so, oh, look. Yes, I might No, have... you've painted on the cow. Oh, no, I painted on the cow. Oh. Yeah, but the cow's still in the pasture. Actually, they were wandering around with the paint on them for quite some time <laughs> because we know it washed them off. And, like, the, I saw the farmer, like, somewhere random. That is like, hilarious. A shopping but... centre or something, like, one time, and he's like, oh, my cow's wandered around for about three months with that paint on. 
Because it, it was summer. It is so cool. It, uh, it's, ah, I get it, I get it. I'm on, on top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you, you had a bird in one of the, it, it was really funky. I mean, yeah, imagine so the driving real past. Yeah, the model's hand. Ma- imagine driving past that joke. Yeah, You'd apparently to, people were talking about it quite a bit. That was a Fleurio <laughs> milk company. Because they look like they're big lovely. freshers, like they're big yeah. cows. And, yeah, okay. Yeah. And, so they were hanging out. Duh. I thought it was painted. Swallows painted up. Yeah, the things. swallows. Like, got, that one's pretty cool. And one of the old cows never. has got angel wings. Yeah. It's, yeah, so it, they were just hanging out and okay. like that. And then you had, <laughs> you, you couldn't help yourself. You snuck in a melting um, Oh, yeah, clock. the melting clock one, yeah. So that's Salvador. That's on a jersey. Yeah. That's, a sweet yeah, jersey right. cow. It is too. Yeah, she's As really I'm pretty. sure you know where you're doing. So so you're, how, do, do you have like, oh, I'm only going to, do one of these or I'm only going to do 10 of these or do you pick and go, nah, that one's only going to be the one ever or not? Yeah, okay. How do you make your mind up on that? Well, for something to be one ever, it would have to be like 60K or something at, <laughs> at the market. I was hoping at you get moment. something for the new studio. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can have a commission. You can commission, paint yourself into something, whatever you want. <laughs> Well, at least well, I know. Yeah. I can say it's an investment. But that's not 60000 So, <laughs> look, my commissions are much less and that's how you can get one off. But if you have a one off of what? I create for me to make that viable, it would have to be around 60k because, yeah. like, if you look at or even more than that, probably. Because if you look at my collections, I do uh, 10 small, 10 large, and then I do three special edition, and then I do a one off piece that's bigger than that. So, there's about 24 pieces of each work available yeah. to purchase, yeah. um, and then each year they sort of go up in price, and you know, that's the marketing side of it, I guess. But sometimes if I know it's a collection, like the pop art stuff with something different, yep. then I did smaller collections. So that's only six and three, uh, six big ones, three smaller ones. Oh, sorry, six small ones, three big ones. Um, yeah, so I just base, because I'd rather them sell than be sitting around for years, well, you know. yeah, no joke. Uh, that's yeah. I don't print I'm assuming that's how you make it's money. All, well, yeah. I mean, like, it's it was how I survived. Yeah, let's put it that survive. way. Yeah, can't say like yeah. It's not like you've bought a few a yachts or something like that, no. No, but I've survived on it. And it's fair enough to say all your pieces are quite exciting. Yeah, like they they all bring. I think to me they look they bring something totally different. Yeah, I, or there's a collection for somebody in there. I think. You've had to be 46 honest. collections that we've found. Is it 46? Yeah. Okay, wow. I never really counted them. That's a lot. 46. Maybe I should get to 50 now. See, now I want to finish it. Well, the- <laughs> <laughs> what happens at 50? <laughs> yeah. 50 by 50. There you go. Well, it makes Better sense. Better step on it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, f- for me, they all bring something different. And, and you know, you've explained, uh, I think as an artist, they, they go through, yeah, I know a few artists, not, you know, not, I'm not an artist, but it, it it looks like you mentioned soul destroying uh, to see your art uh, always objectified, always being talked about, good or bad, from people from any what yeah, stray of eyes. Yeah, it's hard to sort of like distance yourself, I guess, from you know comments. But in saying that, like I'm fortunate that maybe I don't hear a lot of the bad comments, so that's pretty good. <laughs> well, I mean, how can you have a bad comment? Oh, t- oh my God, they painted Emma's the cow. Emma's painting people again. Those what act- the hell? Those activists <laughs> are going to go attack uh, Emma Hack because the cow's been painted with the wings on it. Oh, my God. <laughs> I know, I'm- actually, activists haven't. I was surprised by that one back then. <laughs> but, like, no, well, I mean, oh, look, at the end of the day, if it's safe for the human, it's safe for the animal. Um, as far as paint goes, it wasn't house paint. So, um, you got an oriental feel with um, you mentioned because you were over in Seoul, for instance. Yeah. Um, uh, do you find it easy to pick up um, different um, cultures or, or different feelings if you're there or if you're not there? I'm assuming you were there, so you make up your mind, or well, can you preconceive that before you go somewhere? Hmm. Well, as I said, I don't really like to plan. So, no, I don't preconceive it. I just sort of, you know, you're inspired if you're inspired at the end of the day. Like a chef's inspired by the food from a region. I'm inspired from the art and the food from so, a region. <laughs> so, you know, so, they, yeah. they talk about a writer's block. Yeah. Do you have a writer's block right now? I have an art block, yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Even creating the last collection last year was super hard for me. Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess I, I'm, we're creating content all the time. No art pieces like you're doing, for God's sake. But it is an art. Like what we put out in our videos and whatnot, there's a 
you, you know, have to lo- be creative. Yeah, there's a lot that goes behind it. The way that this kid edits it, the way that COVID oh, edits it. We call now. him COVID oh, for a reason. He's 19. He's wearing a tie. Yeah, he's, he's, he's cute. He's, he said it helps him with the girls. Um, <laughs> but uh, but he this is how he dresses. Then he goes to uni and does he, It would help him with the girls. I yeah. Think he did. It's lovely. Yeah. Yeah, we better take a picture of him and put it up now. So yeah, I think. Know what we're yeah, about. I think you should. Yeah, <laughs> we should put a picture of COVID up. Uh, <laughs> so, but he's got to see his piece. I see mine. Gemma sees her. V sees her. So the team puts in to the final product. And with you, do you take any advice from anyone else when you're doing that, or is that just you? I take advice on a shoot. Um, I think it's more like an input thing than advice. So sometimes my models can bring something to it because they're in it. Like so yep. we might just talk about, oh, you could do this or do that and yeah. play around with ideas. And then I definitely take advice from my assistant, my photography assistant, like when I'm saying, I feel like that's not quite right and maybe we could do this. Like, but it's always a collab. It's a collaboration yeah. more so than a yeah. um, someone telling me what to do. Yeah. I'm a, I actually hate people saying, oh, I've got this great idea for your next exhibition. Um, it's like I'm the fucking artist here. Well, <laughs> yes, but it's it's like that's, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. No, what, do people try and give you advice yeah, on what people, you're going to paint people next? People do. Are you serious? Things like that. And oh. I'm not a fan. I sort of get this deadpan look on my face and I'm like, yeah. Oh, shit, I better keep it quiet. Why don't you I was tell me tell what you I should do next? This That'd next be great. exposition I'm on supermarkets. I'm not a big fan of people telling me what to do in general. So maybe that's sort of where that comes from. Uh, <laughs> I. Uh, I kind of resent them straight away. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone out there that you've done it where you just know to... Yeah, uh, just, know. just don't. If we talk about... <laughs> don't tell an artist what to do. Yeah. Even t- like as a gallerist, like, you know, I sell South Australian artist work when I travel and stuff as well. But I don't tell them how to suck eggs. Yeah. Like I say, look, this I think would work for the market, but it's up to you whether you want to create something like that or yeah. go in that direction or not. It's advice. Yeah. So is it advice or is it just more... Oh, it's an opinion. It's maybe a little bit of an opinion yeah, or it's research, <laughs> whichever way you want to look at it. You know, your, your people want to know what you're thinking. Yeah, well. Uh, it'd be like if. Um, if the artists want to know, but if they don't, then you should just accept what they're giving you. And if you think you can sell it, you can take it. And you can. if you don't think you can sell it, you can also say to them, I don't think that this will be right for the market, so I'm not going to take it. I, yeah, I think that's great advice. Because well, you I can mean, take it for whatever you want. Well, you don't want to like pay lots of money to get someone's work over to New York to sell it, and it's, and it's not really. And it doesn't work there because well, the market pictures doesn't. Pictures of Hong Kong and you selling to New York it doesn't yeah. really work that way, does it? Not at all. So yeah. So if you if you look at artists around the world, uh, do you have a like a a couple of go tos that you think yeah I really like what they're doing. Like I, you know, I thought this about this the other day, and there's just like a piece here and there that I'll sort of look at or feel inspired by. But I don't. I've just. It's almost like because I've been doing the art fairs and then traveling to Basel's and seeing all the art. It's sort of. I feel like I've almost been overwhelmed by all the things available. Nothing really surprises me that much anymore. Unless there's nothing truly unique anymore. I'm like waiting for the next truly unique piece like a painting's a painting's a painting like this i don't think you're like oh, that, i think once again you're like, playing this down like your 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 paintings are multiple things but i'm not talking together. about my paintings i'm talking about other people's paintings okay can we so, talk can i can i just can i'll name an artist and see if you know them okay thanks we're well, really getting put on the spot Banksy. Oh, yeah, okay, I have Banksy, right. right. So, Thank goodness, oh, so, my goodness. I'd be like, what well, artist doesn't? <gasps> so with, with Banksy, yeah, has an incredible knack of doing the right piece at the right time. It, sure. Him, just from what I see, you yes. know, I've, I don't know Banksy. Well, uh, people, well, I'm no sure. No one apparently knows who Banksy is. People must know who he is. Yeah, but he he's no, definitely a guy, a gift of the... He's got a posse. Yeah, there's definitely something there. But produces pieces quite on time with political situations because that's his Well, go-to. that's his discussion. And some of his pieces can be so simple but so well put together. Mm. Do, you, do you look at that and go, yeah, that's cool? No. Nah. 
No, because I'm feeling you don't. <laughs> no, I do. I actually think Banksy is cool, and I think I think Bank, like I think it's completely oversaturated, and he probably hates that as well anyway. But like some of his latest projects, where he created like a fun in a fun park, yeah, like those recent projects, they're like they're fabulous. Like yeah. he's really thinking ahead when he sold his work in the, Central the, Park. The, the, as a oh, for the as a, like, as Banksy does New York for like fifty bucks, not even that twenty dollars, yeah, twenty dollars per yeah. piece. That at- was clever. So those kind of things, like they are, but that that's also a wonderful marketing ploy, isn't it? Oh, so like he does have the double, you know, he's I've, very well thought out. Like, well, yeah, of how he can twist and change things and evolve things. So those that kind of thought and that kind of preparation is massive. That's like you know. Yeah, prep. Do you think you're coming up point. with that by yourself? Hey? Do you think you're coming up with that by yourself? Like, do you think he, because... Oh, I that can't ba- presume what that, he does, but... That, that Banksy does New York, which was the the 30 yeah. days, 30 pieces. He he had to have had a team of people helping. He also had, like, a big auction after that. Ah, oh, how coincidental. So, like, it, yeah. It, it's so, like, yeah. oh, no, I don't do it for money, but the reality is... Yeah, look, you have to. He'd have a um, <laughs> well. He has an in, in betweeny person selling his work clearly. Uh, so cool. that person would probably be like, okay, well, we're going to do this in conjunction with you doing that. We're going to because it is about money at the uh, end of the oh, day. It has whether to be. he like, like whether you know, I mean, in the beginning, you know, graffiti artists used to hang out with them back in the eighties. It wasn't about money and selling artworks, was yeah. it? It was just no, about having an opinion and getting yourself on the wall. So you know, I think. That's where he started, but I think, like everything, you know, it all money it, takes over. Yeah, it does. Unfortunately, uh, uh, and uh, you know, like when I first started creating, I wasn't creating for to to sell my works. I was just creating because I love creating. Whereas, like the business side comes into it, and I think actually, to be quite honest, that's why I've got my blog, yeah. because the business side's almost taken over from just me creating for the fun yeah. of it and feeling the pressure of what people want to see next or what they feel they should be seeing next from me or what, whatever, Yeah, you know? So there's big things there now, whereas before it was just play. Yeah. It's not play anymore. It's no. an adult team. Yeah, it's like you're, <laughs> you know, I, I hate to tell you, you're an adult now Ooh. and I don't know if you have a family. I'm not sure. Um, but <laughs> you, got dogs. You, you, you got dogs. You <laughs> have, got you have, dogs. You have things you have to accommodate for. Yeah, accommodate for the big dogs, um, sure. But if I, I look at stuff like... Um, Banksy, very clever. So yeah. So, so yeah, some, super some clever. like comes across like oh, and then the latest piece about the virus when the 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 train. I have door, not seen this. Oh, it's it's cool. Okay, so he yeah. he's on the train, and when the train opens, the rest of the piece is on the outside of the train, like you are the virus, and and it, uh, okay. Per, so per, it's like a bit of a camouflage blend thing yeah, going on there, right? Yeah, almost got caught doing it because okay. someone filmed the 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 scene. Uh, uh, that must have been him. Uh, filming it but you don't you almost see it's him so yeah it's good it's a good illusion like I like it pull it up so we can show you Emma um and he sneaks in and does pieces but it's clever yeah and you think okay as an artist it's clever um for you when you see you like you're the I notice you use that clock uh the melting clock was is that Salvador yeah that's Dali yeah Dali so did you learn about this and then you know, you see their art or you've been fortunate enough to see their art exhibitions. No, I never studied art. So, yeah, yeah for me it's just, yeah, what I guess, oh, what, what I guess I've seen on my journey is really more than anything. Like I go to all the galleries and stuff when I travel. So, you know, and exploring that. And I, the Dali Museum is pretty amazing. It's out of... Whereabouts um, is that? It's out of Barcelona. It's on Barcelona. the way to Barcelona, on the way to Nice. And uh, about halfway, and it's in this little town. Can't remember the name of the town. But basically he's buried there and he created this. This is his last masterpiece before he passed. So it's got everything in it. It's, like, amazing. It's yeah, know, very... Um, yeah, yeah. So, but now we're talking, but not talking. Yeah, sorry. Um, <laughs> Ollie, just edit this out. Yeah. Uh, I'm on. Oh, so he comes in here. I don't know if you can hear it. No, you see, so draws this, paints this. So he sets up like a virus scene. All right. So he tells this, like, tells this over to get get away. Full graph, technically legal. Rats on Mars, 
like I don't know. It might be funny hearing me cunt. So he sits here, and I think that's Banksy. I think that's what it says. I'm not 100 percent sure. Which is unusual because yeah. that's pretty bold for what he usually does. But yeah, but well, he's doing it in front of people. Yeah, right? fully in front of people. And then, uh, yeah, okay, that's it. I get locked down. Okay. But I. I can't read that, but I get whatever. Get up again. Yeah. I get knocked down, but I get up again. Yeah. I, I don't this know where I got a virus from. Ah, there you go. I, I get, get knocked, knocked down, down, but I get, get up again. again. There you go. Yeah. So I, that's, that's pretty ballsy. Yeah, it's a stunt. Of course it is. See that? I don't know. I'm not so good at <laughs> Emma's that. Emma's not I don't happy like that so much. She's not happy. I fucking pissed I was a little I've, bit more. I, that's I, too marketing for me, I, for I, Banksy. I, I reckon he should just like not do that. Oh, that's so See, cool. that's me judgy, but people judgy me too. So yeah, here we no, are. No. And it, to be honest, Banksy's probably the most judged artist. One of the most judged artists. Without a doubt. Sell it or Dali or... He can do it, whatever so, he wants though, really, can't he? Correct. And I think as an artist you can. And it takes confidence to be able to do what you want. And you've mentioned that that's what you've done. And yeah. I, 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 you know, I think you really underplayed how scary that whole component yeah, is. It's really scary. And <laughs> and spending the the hours, the the weeks, the months, and the money. Uh, yeah, like it's not cheap walking to a studio and with full set builds and everything and humans and and then hoping that you get that photo from something that's in your hair yeah. in your head. So it is. Yeah, a, it's amazing. Yeah, I show I, everything I do. I, think, I don't not show anything I do. Yeah. So everything that you see is everything I've created. And, yeah, back in the day, like, you'd create, like, a collection of 12 artworks, whereas now I've cut that back. But when you've got 12, you're showing literally every single piece that you're sort of creating along the way. So for me, I think um, that can be confronting. But also I sort of think, like, those days of creating a really nice big collection of, like, 12 works or even plus plus, you can create a story on walls, like for a solo show. So, and it's a journey of looking at that piece, that piece, that piece, that piece. Whereas now, it's not viable to create those size exhibitions anymore. The market, especially here in um, Australia, is really it's been bad for a few years. That's why I've done the overseas thing more than anything. Got gone off and done the art fairs because if I could just stay here and sell a shitload of work, I think I'd just stay here and you sell would. a shitload of work, you know. So, <laughs> no, <laughs> so like, you so know, true. like I mean, it's nice to sort of say, oh, you know, I did a show in New York and I did a show here, there, and but you know, maybe you know, in my early thirties, late twenties, that's wowish. But like you know, like I'm in my forties now, and I just sort of Wanna you know. Be home. Well, yeah, I just enjoy being home. So, uh, you know. Well, I can't imagine you leaving your dogs for a start. Uh, yeah, no, I still can leave them. They're okay. Um, if we talk about music, um, is it Gordia? Yeah. Um, somebody that I used to know. I mean, yeah, I think everyone is. singing voice. I, 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 I <laughs> cannot sing. Uh-huh. Um, I don't know if you even tried to sing then. <laughs> yeah, no, it doesn't get much better. Okay. Uh, there's a few things I'm not blessed with and singing and, and drawing. You think it's they're, a, they're, drawing they're the two the that I'm happy to just give them up. Okay. But you talk about that song, which I think everyone's yes. had their piece of saying that song. I know I have yes. a few times in the car. Uh, I had no idea that was your work okay. until going to speak to you. Yeah, okay. And There you go. And looking it up, that's pretty cool. Yeah. How the hell did that come about? That came about. Natasha Pincus is the director-producer. She contacted me. Uh, yeah, she basically said, we want to paint um, Wally, his name's Wally, into a wall. And um, is that something you can do? I'm like, yep. Yeah. Uh, they were based in Melbourne at the time. I was, I didn't know who he was. <laughs> so I was like, oh, I was in Bali actually, just relaxing this lovely. I just remember the day I was offered it and I was like, oh, I don't really want to do any <laughs> jobs at the moment. Well, it's not well paid. It was like, oh, well, it's got to be special. So I just told, Go for it. told her to send me some details about him and so there was a song that he did in 2006 called your heart's a mess and i knew that song yeah. and i was like when i found out it was him i was like that did that song i was like yeah okay i'll do it and then she sent me the song and uh at the time it only had his voice on it kimber actually was really last minute like they basically tried to find a female for this and they just couldn't find the right female it's actually going to be completely dropped like they yep. weren't even gonna do it um, and then Kimbra had done, yeah, she'd done her own cover of Your Heart's a Mess. 
and um yeah so that's how she got the job as well through the same song really but yeah so i got asked to do it by natasha and yeah and then i got speaking to wally talk chat to wally on the phone and uh because they're melbourne obviously here i'm here and um yeah he sort of said what do you want to paint for the background and i said i just don't feel like it should be my background like it just doesn't like this needs to be you somehow um, I don't think it needs to be flowers or whatever. <laughs> it's not really... Oriental. Well, yeah, well, I just, just didn't... Well, I wasn't doing Oriental so much. I was doing a little bit of Oriental. Anyway, so I said to him, well, look, what's... this?" Like, then I went into the marketing side of it because obviously I've been working in the advertising industry doing hair and makeup for so many years and whatever. And I just sort of said, well, look, what's your album cover? Because this is the song before the album was released. Yeah. He goes, oh, it's actually my dad's artwork. And I said, well, send me your dad's artwork. And I was like, well, that's perfect. Let's just work with your dad's artwork. And then so I asked him to reconfigure it a little bit so that his side was different colour tone to her side. So she's more in the greens and golds and his golds and browns. And then, um, yeah, so he sort of played around, reconfigured it, and then we actually had somebody else did the background because there was no budget. It was like really bad budget. And Like no budget as in unlimited? No. No budget. As in... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I want you to do this piece, but I'm not going to pay you. Yeah, I get it. All well, right. it's the hardest working. It's what happens <laughs> all the time. Anyway, yeah, get wow. into that one. All right, let's start talking <laughs> no, but about I don't that. resent him. He's amazing. Like, and honestly, this job was like it was my choice as to whether I wanted to create on it. Yep. So I did get paid a little bit, but it wasn't really like it wasn't major. And we didn't know how long, how long it would actually take. It's the first time they ever done stop motion as well. Uh, so there were a lot of things that went on that day that were so super hard that you wouldn't believe it. Uh, it took 23 hours to create straight, no breaks. So it was full on, like, and literally a day, like, I think hour 17, I couldn't see. Like, I was literally, like, fatigued oh, and... Ollie likes stop motion. Yeah. He's, uh, he's promised me some, some, he's promised us some stop motion stuff before. Ah. Platters, yep, yet to see it. Oh, Stop motion platters. Yeah. Oh, that's that cute. Yeah. 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 You don't, can have don't, mate. Carrots talking to the don't, strawberries. Don't hide it, mate. The ABC, <laughs> ABC show, yeah. Super Opera. I don't know this. Oh, it's like it really, um, when I was a kid, it always came on. It was just like fruit when he was cut y- up and they turned into animal. When he was a kid. Just, isn't it Sesame Street? The one, da, 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 da. And she was the orange and she sung. She sung the opera. Do you remember it? Oh, my right? God. No. It's, I don't, but I I definitely watch Sesame Street. Look it up. Seriously, it's a mouth on an orange. And she's, anyway, <laughs> it was funny. It made me laugh a lot. That. that was stop motion. Uh, let's, uh, he's talked about stop motion. It's difficult to do and it takes a bloody yeah, long well, time. Yeah, so look, every stop basically is a couple of dots. Pull out, line him up, take a photo, and then get back in and do another couple of dots. And like, yeah, <sighs> it was hard. So 23 hours. And then I couldn't look at it because it was like childbirth and I just was just too much pain. So I actually didn't look at it for, after it was released, I couldn't watch it for about six months, something like that. Uh, okay, so damage, <laughs> a psychological yeah, was, damage. Yeah, yeah really. Like, <laughs> but now it's okay. Yeah, now you can look yeah, past it. Yeah, no, that. it's like, yeah, now I can sort of like get over that. Um, and, you know, <laughs> Well, <laughs> God, no one's done it since. Do you wonder why? Uh, Who would have thought uh, that no one's done it since? Like literally no one has done that since. Do you uh, know why? It's so bloody hard yeah, to, do. to do. It's crazy. Okay. Like literally crazy to do. So, But I've always wanted to do it, so I'm glad that that sort of came up. But I, I knew by doing it that would be the only time I would do it, so I wanted it to be something special. Has it, so, yeah. has it done anything for you? People know my yeah. work, whether they know me or not. Okay. That's yeah. what I'm saying. So it does come up through Yeah, that. things, things, you know, these things are meant to be, Yeah. you know, and that piece, you know, I can be proud of as an iconic, you know, it would go down in history, yeah. really, because it was also the first piece at the time to get the amount of hits it got on Instagram. It was before the um, the Gangnam Style guy came out. So uh, that one was yeah. that one was the beginning and then it was also like the beginning. I was before the Gangnam Style. Yeah, well, yeah, uh, he took over. But we're on a couple of billion views now and something like that. Yeah. It's like ridiculous. Uh, and that's from your work. Yeah. So there's people seeing my work. But as I said, they don't necessarily know who I am. They just know the work. So, 
Yeah. So do you think that was the right place at the right time? Yeah, always. Do you think that's had a lot to do with everything in your career? Right place, right time? I think you got to listen to your intuition. And when I haven't listened to my intuition, that's when I've got into trouble. So, yeah, I think the things that I've been blessed with and things that have, you know, been those points, I guess, in your life, they're intuition. You know, they're meant to be. So how much is... I was trying to look something up, but I can't get it. So how, how, how much do you think, from an early stage, I'm assuming you didn't listen to yourself as much as you did when you've got more mature? No, or, I don't know. I think, I, the whole I, think time. I listen to myself quite a lot. Okay. Like, I've, yeah, I've always sort of listened to my intuition. I think it's only in the last few years that I've stopped listening to my intuition, but I'm going back to it now, so sorting that out. <laughs> <laughs> It's amazing. Yeah, uh, do you, do I think, I, think like, I stopped for a while, you know. Do you, do you feel like as an artist you're forever um, re-inventing uh, or re, um, re, re trying to reincarnate yourself? Do you feel nah. like? No? No. Nah. No, you don't feel like that that has, has to be? No, I feel like I'm just creating what is me at that time. Yeah. And, like, if that means that the work's evolving then I do hope the work does evolve like and I haven't just sat there and just done wallpapers for the rest of my life I didn't want to get stuck in that it was really hard to get out of there at the time so you know there's some people that just paint in one particular style for the rest of their life exactly the same thing for the rest of their life and I couldn't do that so I think for me it's important to evolve and try new things but in saying it, it's harder to do that because then people have to sort of go on this journey with you, whether they like it or not. Yeah. You know, and then that's confronting as well because they may not like it as much as they like your older works. So, it, yeah. Is it kind of like when an artist like oh, Eminem brings out a whole lot of things that, you know, people, you know, he was a rap battle, like a, what do they call them? Battle rap, whatever. MC. No, yeah, but like they do the battle competitions. Well, yeah. Battle, right. And he's very good. And when you watch his stuff before he became popular, you're like, oh, guy's on the ball. Then he produces a whole lot of music that people totally understand. Then he goes missing for a while and he comes back. It takes, sometimes people don't like it. It's really common in music industry, yeah, isn't it? All the time. Mm. And, and you see it. And I'm assuming, like, like you're saying, it's the same sort of but, thing. But, you know, I think music's also really attached to, like, <clears throat> music's... So when you're listening to music, you have your own visuals, you have your own yeah. time of your life. Yeah. You have particular... So that memory can never really be replaced, especially 10 years later if someone comes back and you feel attached to them at a certain time in your life as well, then that's when music speaks... Music speaks to you. So maybe the music he creates now doesn't speak to you like it spoke to you back then with where you were at and who you were then. Yeah. And therefore you'd think, oh, well, I'm just not connected to his new stuff. Yeah. So I think music is actually a lot more judged in that way. I think art is, but I think music definitely is like its own thing, you know, like because I really think that that, you know, especially, you know, your one hit wonders and stuff, like they'll never be able to get something else out of it. Like it, that might be crazy. Well, gang, wonderful gang work. man. Hey, I think he got another one, huh? Gang man star. Remember yeah, that footage look, you showed me of you dancing on. Was, was and it, singing it? But was it huh? a cre- was it really artistic? Was it was no. it someone really speaking from their heart? I don't know. No, so pro- look, probably you know, not. Let's no, not use no, that okay, as a, yeah, don't, don't a use that as a reference. Terrible use something better. Example, terrible example. All someone right. who's like really amazing songwriter and they had this one hit and then like created these beautiful songs later, but no one really appreciated them like they appreciated. There will be Cat someone. Stevens, someone I'll- like that, you know, like he created beautiful songs back in the day and now his use of everyone's not quite sure about it so much. You know, like, yeah, yeah. and his okay. music would be just as beautiful as it was back then. It's no different. But yeah. that was that trajectory at that time, at that moment. His music meant something to somebody then. But it's also the same as, like, I used to love dancing with techno back in the day before there was, they ruined it with words. <laughs> and 
<laughs> and I listen to new stuff now, like what Boy Wonder over here listens to, and I'm like, oh, I just never was like that, like back in my day. Do you think there's like it was a, like you like were train that. spotting? You were there, yeah. and the people like 10, 20 years older than you were looking at you, going, "What the heck are you listening to?" And that is a sign of old age, my dear. <laughs> <laughs> I've always you, said that, you, you know, it's, it's a sign of old age when you look at the music that the young ones are listening to and you think, what the heck is that? I just say, it's <laughs> like, look, they're all, you know, they're all remixes now. And like, and I look at it and I, I go back and I, I go what I listen to in the car. I, I mostly listen to YouTube and talks and things because that's what, I, you know, that's what I'm into. And yeah. then I go back and I used to DJ, this going back a while, so nice minimal Where techno. did you DJ? Oh, my, so I've do it at Silverfish. Oh, God, Heaven. that was back in the day, uh, wasn't it? Was it was back in the day. Heaven, I've played a gig in Melbourne at Ministry of Sound. Oh, like, that's fancy. Yeah, pretty fancy that for the day. That was a good club. Yeah, that that's, I was DJ Casper because I was so white. <laughs> Oh, you're Casper. All right. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. it was, you <laughs> know. hang out Silverfish. And, and yeah, Silverfish. So, so I've, yeah, well, yeah. there you go. So I've, I've met, well, in fact, I probably know a few of your friends, but we, yeah. we won't get into that. We won't get into the old but, clubs. Scene. But, but yeah, so this was ages ago. And like, you know, I realized I, it was very hard to keep a retailing job by working at night. So it was almost impossible. Mm. But if we go back into some of some people that you see are, it was a piece that, is there a piece that you've seen somewhere in the world where you've gone, ah, oh, that's amazing? Like, you know, something like, you know, people say with Yeah, the, but I don't know if I think that now. Do you know what well, I mean? Well, when you like, saw it though, like, you know. Yeah, I, and I, I own some of those pieces. What, you know, you, I bought them. Oh, oh, so you've got them. I have a collection of art, yes. It's not my own. Really? So, yes, of course. Stop it. Yeah. Where do you put these pieces? In my home. So you, so <laughs> do they have a special, a, a special moment? I've, well, yeah, there's a special moment of purchasing a piece, of course, because it con- you're connected to it. Yeah, but whether you connect it to it ten years later or not is another thing. So it's the same thing with the music thing, right? In a way, yeah, totally. Except they're still connected to that music. Like but it ha- but anyway. yeah, correct. You have a connection no matter what. Well, when you purchase a piece of art, you have to have a connection with it. I mean, you don't just aesthetically go, "Oh, it's just matching my decor. I'm going to buy it." You go, "It does conveniently match my decor. However, this makes me feel X, Y, and Z, or it reminds me of something in my childhood, or I just love." the way that feels and makes me feel. And I've got to look at it every day and it's going to make me feel that way. That's nice, right? That's why people buy art. I look at some of the stuff I've bought. So Soffles, I don't know if you know Soffles, he's a street artist. Um, I was at an art exhibition and my friend, he had no money, and he came up and he said, no, Ben, ben, ben actually listens. <laughs> he probably killed me for saying that I'm funny, but fuck, he didn't. And he was it just, happens. he was in awe <laughs> of it, like, and mm. I was like, oh. And so. So you bought it. I did. And I said. For him or yeah, for yourself? No, for him. Oh, you're and, I, and I said to Ben, I said, when you find a spot for this, you can take it. And I ended up having the piece for nine years and he rang me up and he goes, how could he not have a spot for it? Well, he, How big he, was it? Was it like monster no, it was, or something? It was a, no, it's a bit bigger than this. But he didn't. He wanted it because he loves softballs to the to the end of the earth. And okay. he'd moved. He was an Adelaide boy. Wasn't in Adelaide boy. Then he moved to Melbourne. Okay, and, so he was on the mo- he was on the yeah move. on the move. Yeah. And he just found a place in St Kilda. So I'm painting Ben's picture. And then he, he said, no, nah, I don't want it here. And I was saying, it's it's here. It's just, and then he rang me and he said, no. Nah, Do you I want miss it? it? No, I never hung it up. It was oh, his. you never hung it? It was his. You didn't hang it in the meantime? No. no I, in fact, that? I bought it and didn't tell him. And he goes, oh, fuck, it's bought because it had a dot on it. Oh. And I go, that's yours, bro. And it was a fuck it. It almost makes him cry now because yeah. it was, you could see how excited he was. Yeah, it's a, it's a, and it means like I can see like I. There's you know, always I, a place to hang something though. Come on, man! Oh, mate, like seriously, seriously never I, hung over nine have, years. That's I've just had, weird. I've had. I've well, been well, hanging it. It wasn't mine. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Not you. Him. He should have hung it. Why oh, did you hang it earlier? It's well, crazy. Ben, if you're listening. Ben oh, Dahls. Let, what uh, the heck? You, you actually take know it Ben. It's Ben Shaw. Okay. So Ben's like. You know, he's a, he loves it. And, you know, to see the excitement when it was his, I was like, oh. But at that same Maybe show. Maybe he didn't believe it for nine years. <laughs> Hang on, he was right. No, I was always reminding him <laughs> because I was yeah. sitting there. But yeah. I bought a piece from iRocker and 
it's a big blue face. Um, it's a killer piece, like a sprayed piece. It's now in our office. But I never had somewhere that I thought, oh, it looks like like where I want it to be. Yeah. And now it does, and I really like it. And then these guys get to experience it because it's got that. Because the other piece we got there. So you there, have to give me a tour. No. Is yeah, we well, get. Is it nah, here? No, it's, no, it's like the new. Oh, so, you, the so new we've tripped one. up the new right. joint. So okay. we've um, but but it, it's got a great big blue head in it. Yeah, it's pretty spectacular. Yeah, like and then I I asked. But also, him, you're connected to it. Yeah, like, I, it's I, something that's you know. I had a chat to him and I was like, "What made you draw? Like, who's this person?" And he yeah. goes, "No, it's no one. It's just someone I can draw." And I was like. And then I went back and I'm looking at his pieces and he, he draws Is it the this, same person? Yeah, he draws it? this pa- this face amazing. Like, Who is this face? It, it's no one. No, it, it is, has to be somebody. It's no one. I reckon it's like his spiritual well, whoever guide it or is, something, you know, like he's seen his I, face. I he paints his face all the time. It's got to be more than that. Well, I had a, Come on. I had a good Dreams chat. of the face. What's going on with the face? I had a good, well, I, doubt, <laughs> I, I very much doubt he's listening, but. <laughs> I, I did. I went into it, and I've seen him draw this face in the same sort of look. He he really can nail the the look, and it's sort of, it looks like a person looking for something and looking for some hope and looking for more. And for me, it's an aspirational piece of like, okay. oh, there's more. But yeah. anyway, why are we talking about me? God, no, this is... you're talking about art and yeah. what you love, and that's like what art is. So, uh, yeah, and nice. it comes across, and that's like the the same like Joel. So the Amiga yeah, fans. So he's just done a piece on one of our supermarkets and it looks cool. And, of course. Um, everyone thinks it looks like my wife. Um, just, I don't know, it's very similar to her, I guess. But okay. it, it looks amazing. Because it looked like your wife. Because <laughs> yeah, it looks like my wife, right just things. saying. Um, <laughs> and and like, I copped a bit from my boss saying, who the hell, why are you getting... You I put said, your oh, wife on the side of the building. <laughs> I'll just say, I don't know why... What does dro- she think about it? Oh, she's she think down it there like all the time. She takes her friends down there. They take photos in front of her. It's super Joel's cool. Joel's got a lot to answer for. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and it's so like you see it, people that, because I didn't tell anyone, it was like, they're like, oh, fuck, it looks like that. I go, oh, yeah. Moral of the story, Joel had a we bought I just bought a piece off Joel, which is going into the new office as well. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, it's, it's a drawing. And... It looks so good. It's like, he goes, oh, that's probably my last drawing I have. And I was like, oh, yeah. And, yeah, you're right. You, you get something. You don't just buy it for the fuck of it. You're buying no. it because it's something in there that you just go, oh, that resonates with me Correct. and I'll find somewhere to put it. Yeah. Anyway, um, so that's everyone's love. So I, so I do have some love of um, some yeah. art and it's all in a – that and you've just told me you've bought some pieces of art. Are you yes. allowed? To, do you want to say about one piece that you've got that means something to you? Well, they all mean something to me. Um, I <laughs> bought uh, my most recent purchase is Annette Bazaar's work. She's passed away recently. She's a South Australian artist. I always wanted to own one of her pieces, and you know they're like twenty k up. So. That sort of been off off the cards, yep. and um, yeah, and then her brother was releasing a few pieces after her passing that were prints um, of her work, and that's this beautiful female face. She's yellow, and she's got like these nudes painted down and into her face, and it sort of relates quite nicely to my work with the beauty and then yeah. with the nudes, and it's got camellias in it, which my grandma um, had this beautiful garden with camellia bushes and they're the flower camellia bushes and violets remind me of her they were on this little area that I used to hang out in so yeah so I purchased that piece for those reasons and I like you know there's a cluster of reasons for owning that work and I love it she's um on my main hit list no she's on my main wall yeah. yeah yeah I've got her so yeah did you um just recently I think last weekend there was a auction, uh, Lord, Lord Edward, I think it was. Right. Um, and this guy had some artwork from it was in a monastery, and there's, I'm not going to bother talking about it. But the Pete, this definitely not my style, but portrait style prints from a long time ago. They just got auctioned. Paintings. On, so. Paintings. Yes. yes, definitely paintings. Uh, does a fair bit of. You know, he had a whole lot of other stuff, but sure. But anyway, what's the point? The point is that <laughs> it's not my style, right? Right. But, but it was works that this person had uh, taken with him 
um, and bought. So he wasn't the artist. Yes. He, he, so it's his collection? Yeah, his yeah. collection. And he, you know, was in a monastery and they and, he, and along the time he, he's got some... I, I don't know who the artists are, but you can tell. I that. probably may not know who the artists are either. Yeah, it, but it, clearly it was all stuff artists. from like the, you know, the early 1900s and yeah. things like that. And I looked at the pieces and went, "Oh, that's good for someone. It's definitely not for me." So, yeah, if you're an art collector, yes, are you buying things because you like them, or are you buying things because you think they're going to make? Money? Well, if you're like a collector that's collecting pieces that are of note and worth a lot of money a lot of the time they collect them and they might bequeath them to an art gallery or let the art gal- let an art gallery hang them for a bit if they're important works yep um usually they'll collect around a theme or like a like maybe a particular kind of artist or a kind of year like around a kind of year or like you know um a style of art or um yeah, or like complete contemporary art or contemporary art from the 60s or whatever. They, they'll they have their little genre of what they Box like to collect. It into. Yeah. Um, uh, and maybe they just collect prints. Maybe they collect, you know, photography. Maybe they collect paintings. So sometimes they'll hang them. A lot of the times they'll end up in like a nice humidified S- storage. storage, like with, you know, proper storage for them. Um, and sometimes they'll end up in an art gallery or whatever. So when you go to an art gallery, you'll see a plaque donated by so-and-so or whatever. Yep. Yep. So if someone's got lots of cash and they like to donate to things like that. Uh, <laughs> philanthropy. <laughs> Is that what it's called? That's what it's called. Should art be on display or should art be in, I won't say someone's house, but should art be on display or should it be stored away so people I think art should be enjoyed. Okay. Um, but if you don't have enough forms, did you the say Annette Bezor? Did sometimes you say it ends up in storage. <laughs> is Annette Bezor? Bezor, yeah. yeah. Is that like this? Is this we got the right? Yeah, stuff? this is yeah, this is her work. Okay, it's pretty unique. It's pretty cool. Yeah. So I first saw her work in the early nineties, and she's sort of like she painted the Green Lady, which is Chechnikov's Green Lady. He's like a South African artist who paint like the the green face. I don't know. It's like this. Oriental. It's quite kitsch at the it's time. It's cool pieces. Yeah, yeah. Who works beautiful and it's multi-layered. So when you look at it texturally, it's really quite gorgeous as well. And yeah. So these are photos. No, the photographs are for her. They're paintings. Yeah, they're paintings. Yeah, oil paint, oil work. So they're cool. Yeah. So she's a great South okay. Australian See, artist. See, that's, that's kind of similar to your year, style, huh? Well, she's an inspiration for me. Yeah. Like back in the nineties when I first started painting. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Like I always loved her work. So it's nice to actually own a piece finally. She, so, uh, yeah. She's got some cool style. Yeah. Like I can see how you like that. Yeah. It's, it's similar to all the stuff that especially the more modern or the it's got that style of piecing it all together, using a bit of outdoor stuff, a bit of nature. Yeah. It's got some animals. It's always the faces. Yeah, it's got to be of everything. Mm. Do you do, uh, do, do your friends hit you up and say, hey, can you do a portrait? <laughs> No, they don't. Really? No. No? You'd be like, get stuffed. You're on your mm. own, no? <laughs> yeah, I think that's probably what they'll get. I, I don't know. Yeah, no. no. Do they know you too well? Like, <laughs> Well, I mean, look, to be quite honest with you, most of the friends that would do it are in my works anyway, like from the early days. Yeah. So, yeah, they've already got their own portraits. <laughs> From back in the day. <laughs> oh, my God. So one of my favourite places to eat is um, Madame Hanoi. Yeah. And I had no idea this was your piece. Mm. And She's the biggest body paint in the world there. Eight metres high. Correct. And it's impressive piece. Yeah, she's really beautiful. And it suits that location perfectly. Did, yeah. Surely, did you see that location before you painted that? Yeah, like she was, you know, she was designed for that place. So exactly the height of where she looks, everything is it, like how I. That, that's how I planned her. Because that is so cool. Yeah. And I've been yeah, it's in a, a, it's a, really cool a heap of time. The sticky ribs there. Oh my god. Yeah, the food's yummy. Uh, 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 it's so the good. Duck and, and you can. Yeah, oh my god. You can. <laughs> I, it's you can get. I go there. Our oh, espresso martinis, yeah, Madame Hanoi. Yeah, I'm going on record to say the best in. 
Next and, time, let's do a podcast and, there. Yeah. What are we doing here? Well, I agree. In this old office yeah, that's, rehab well, thing going that, that, on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're in transition. Yes, I know. Uh, but the, um, <laughs> the for, for me, I, I look at that and I go, that is the perfect use of um, art meeting the, the, the scenery rather than the the scenery and the art being added, that to me, the pieces wrapped Yeah, it was part of it. Like, well, Nick was very particular about what he wanted for that space and he's very particular in general. That's why he's a fantastic chef. So, yeah, everything was well thought out. I even, like, but I curated all the walls there. So okay, yeah. next time you're in there, go and have a look at all the little pictures and all the little mementos and things I found. So I was doing a job, oh, where was I going? I was going, I think I was in Shanghai. And I got the job and I thought, oh, I'll quickly go through Vietnam as you do on the way home. I haven't been. I really want to go to Vietnam. Well, yeah. So this I is my first been. time. I get to Hanoi and I, I was, couldn't work out how to get across the road. But <laughs> if you know if you know Vietnam, you literally just walk into traffic and they stop for you, which like, and there's so much traffic. That's the, anyway, it's like parting, it's like Moses parting the waves kind of thing. Um but yeah, so I arrived there late at night and I have 24 hours to find art for the space. So I thought, well, I'll just do a reconnaissance and check it out. Seeing I'm on my way back through and I don't think it cost me anything extra to do it, you know. I was sort of like just wandering, <laughs> like wandering. And um, yeah, so I found all the photographs there and some of the posters. So every, and then I started going looking at antiques and I found some antiques. So there's beautiful antiques, like worth quite a bit sitting on that wall there. Really? Well. Yeah. Because I've seen and them. And then I jumped online and did a whole lot of eBay and just went crazy in the antiques, like all the, the notes and some of the moulds. Yeah, there's pretty amazing things in that collection. So, yeah, and so I curated it and then I organised all the framing and stuff and where everything went. So, yeah, I did more than just the mural. I say just the mural. It's a massive mural. Oh. But I actually curated the whole space and it was a really beautiful project to work on. Ah, oh, it's an impressive. Uh, so that's some that's almost interior design. It's curating. Curating, okay. Yeah, oh, it's curating. very impressive. I and I. So I've, you curate a museum. You can curate someone's house. You can curate a collector's house with where things go, things like that. You know. So yeah. it is a little bit of well, it's like inter- it's fancy interior design, right? Yeah. Hmm. Uh, see, I think I've got a pretty bad eye for it. But it's more than just putting <laughs> pretty colours everywhere. It's, yeah. It's more like the journey, the, the story, story, and what relates to that space and what, what pieces relate to each other and why you put them there. And Has anyone else used like you for that in a, in a restaurant? No, no, not really. If I open a restaurant, I'll use you. Okay, thank uh, you. For that. Um, yeah. What thing? Well, what are we doing? Use, Where are we going? Sure Where do I, I get to go? Have to be. Somewhere I haven't been. Let's go to Russia or something. Uh, might Russian be food. Adelaide. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry to be the disappointment. It will be in but Adelaide, be but free. it has to have a theme. Adelaide um, is Adelaide the theme? I like uh, the infusion, Asian infusion. I yeah. like, I'm a sucker for Asian food. Where haven't like, you been in Asia? Oh, seriously, oh, I haven't you been haven't to been Vietnam no. at all. I'm waiting. I think my girls are a little. Oh, they're, they're, I'm t- slowly. We've got a saying around the house. Well, you need to try that because that's the sort of food we get in Vietnam. So I've, I've started mm. this psyche. Hoi so, An is the best food. So, so go to Hoi An, and you can take kids there. Safe, easy. Okay. Really, really lovely city. Are, are Anyone you, go to Hoi An? It's my favorite. Hoi An, like, and where's yeah. that? Sort of like to the right, in the middle-ish, down a bit. <laughs> Fuck, from where? It's in the south. When you talk about the north and south. Oh, okay. South. Okay. Yeah, but so, it's only just south. Because I'm a. Do you, are you a you bit of a. You can fly f- directly into Da Nang and then just drive to Hoi An from there. Okay. Yeah. Um, note that. Cause someone Please needs note to that. Me. Go there. Someone needs to remind me of that. If we if we, well, talk, we just have to listen to this whole podcast. Yeah, and find right it again. to the. To, to, to Emma the mentioned middle, somewhere to, the to go. Um, do, you, do you enjoy. Do you look at food like the same way that you look at art? No. So if someone, so if someone plates up. Um, so do you want me so to show you? A sta- if I went for a digger station, do I look at it like I look at art? No. Do, do you want me to show you a But I look at it as its own beauty of fabulousness. Yeah, go on, show me. Because I do love, I do, a lovely, I do love and enjoy a beautifully plated meal. Well, <laughs> this is something we're selling. Ah, okay. So oh, know, my God, it'll be nice now. So. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Everyone's like, what? <laughs> no, I can't see it. I have to put it in. Ah, so. So these, we're doing baked spuds, right? Okay. So if you go to the next one, and so that's the chef, Craig. Yes. So we've come up with, like, we've got a little kitchen in a couple of our stores. Makes me feel hungry. Yeah. 
So, so with with yeah, that's the, su- the bucket I went of. Too bullet. far. <laughs> oh, that's okay. <laughs> You've got my phone there, in. in no, there's no Careful porn. That. There, I don't think. Careful no, pass your phone oh, around. Is there, is there a porn there? Oh no, that's no. Not. Please don't scroll. scroll for but that. <laughs> but when when I look at that, like that's that we've pl- he's played at that to sell spuds. So we're selling spuds, and yes. I'm like, ah, oh, he played it up himself, and I watched him do it. So obviously, you know, his mind is this is what it needs to look at. Very impressive. Do you, when an impressive dish comes out, I can't help but pull the camera out and take a photo. Okay. You don't get that urge. I used to do that a lot. But mainly, <laughs> actually, and I do it on my travels because mainly it can take you right back there with that flavour, that taste, that moment. Yeah, totally, 100%. So that's what I, I – yeah. 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 So I used to photograph food all the time. I don't anymore. But I do if it's something special. If so, that and I'm having a special time, so that I remember that moment, and you can also remember the taste and everything as well. Yeah, I agree, and I think alcohol and food great combinations in South Australia. We're so yes. lucky um, to have both of those, and we had a chat with Darren Thomas talking about how good our, our pastured land is, how good it is where. You know, he he was going into that saying it was no 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 surprise we've had so many Melbourne Cup winners from South Australia because of the conditions here are just amazing, like the food bowl of the world. So to me, it's um it is Im- it is impressive that it's right here in South Australia, and we're quite lucky to be the safest place in the world, probably right yeah, now. We're in a good bubble. Yeah, in a good at the moment, and it, it seems to be a, a great place for not only food but for wine and for some reason alcohol um um food and art seem to go together why is this so (laughs) well i don't know they all offer an experience though don't they and like you've got to say locations as well the landscape that we have here is really beautiful well you you did an event with um art at a dinner yeah, event. Yeah, I did. I did one at the Treasury. So yeah. at the moment, if so, anyone wants to go and see my work hanging, it's hanging at the Treasury and in the it's, bar um, September and the restaurant. September 2020. <laughs> yeah, it'll, it'll be up for a while, don't worry. So <laughs> so whereabouts yeah. is this? Uh, so Treasury is um, King William Street yep. in the city. Yep. Um, and, yeah, right next to Town Hall. So super nice. Chef there is Nick Philsell. He's lovely. You probably remember him from back in the day as well. Um, and if you don't, you'd remember his face. Yes. Uh, he's, yeah, he's great fun. So basically he asked me if I wanted to hang my work in there. I said that's good because storage is an issue. Let's hang some artwork. So I hung some stuff up um, about just at the end of when we sort of came out of our sort of stage three-ishness. yep. yep. Um, which was weird going into the city then, <laughs> I have to say, because I live up on the hill at that time. So, um, yeah, so I hung some stuff in there. Yeah, so there's beautiful works in there. There's three or four different collections. Um, so, yeah, go in, have a drink, have a look around, or just go and have a look around if you're in the area. You don't have to have a drink or eat, but it's really yummy food there as well. At so, Treasury? Yeah, and we did a dinner the other night uh, as part of a Sala thing. I wasn't going to do anything for Sala this year because it's just – Everything was just a bit tricky. Um, so, yeah, and I've done salad every year. So then at the very last minute I decided to quickly have a salad dinner, something fun. And also last minute in the fact that it wasn't going to get cancelled or something. Something happen, could happen, you know? yeah. So, yeah, in the end it was like 30, just over 30 people. And it's a really good vibe. Everybody was just in such a good mood and happy to be out. And the food was beautiful. We matched every course to one of my collections hanging in the space. Cool. So, yeah. So can you talk fun. me through uh, the mm-hmm. entree? Yeah, the entree was uh, like um, it was seared tuna and kingfish and they were done like little cubes, like you did like a checkerboard kind of thing with some condiments, like there was an air-dried kimchi, which was super yummy. Air-dried um, kimchi? Yeah, a little bit of wasabi on the side, little dots. Yeah, was but, it dry? Hey. Like freeze-dry? Yeah, like Air crunchy. dried. Yeah, so yeah. crunchy. Yeah, it was super good. Like really nice. You should just go in and try that. <laughs> yeah, I, just, I haven't I, I haven't like, had that before. Like what well, kimchi? Know. You know what? But I don't wet know if kimchi. I've been there. Have you had dried kimchi? Yeah, correct. No. Yeah, we're well, no. in it because it's great. 
It's the next thing, I reckon. <laughs> Everyone was just like, wow. I, I want to go But you just cut place. it up and you put little bits on top of the little squares. So, yeah. So that was the bit <laughs> based around my geometric collection. And then he did a dark two ways. Uh, so com- what was the picture? What was the picture? What, what? Uh, geometric was the first geometric collection. Okay. So, um, so that was, yeah. So And then you sort of did them as like a checkerboard kind of shape. So... It'll be up on Facebook. I've never you been there. You'll be up on my Facebook. You'll be able to see there. the pretty photos of the dinner. I've, I've never been there. Treasure, I can't believe you treasury. haven't been there. Go. The Treasury, 1860. No. And underneath they got the tunnels. You can hold a great big event down there. They're wicked. I painted someone in there. There's orbs everywhere. It's crazy. Spooky I, land. I've, I'm, this is it. Um, are they, yeah. Do they do lunch? <laughs> Yes, right. they do lunch. Go in for lunch. Seven days a week. Um, Go in there. I'm have a look at my art. That's right. I've, I've just um, Say hi sold. to Nick for me. I've Tell sold, him I sent you. Yeah. I've sold, my, I've sold, yeah, go in and sold myself food. to yeah. blocking in some of that time. Or come to the next dinner. So do you... Hopefully we'll do another one. So if, if, if we look at, um, you know, the way that you've you've been with your, with your art, um, in 2014 you released an Emma Hack art prize. Yes. Um, are you still? Are you are you still? It's on like, hiatus. So, I've written. <laughs> so so have you actually? Are you still doing that? Or what, well, so I what was it, the basis of that? Like I, I got a feeling there's a bit of, hey guys, we need to support artists. Yeah, in our it was own. the South Australian Art Prize. Yep. There wasn't any South Australian Art Prize at the time, and this was unlimited. You could do what any art, whatever art you wanted to do, yep. sculpture. I don't know. It could be anything, right? So um, and every year I'd have a theme. And then I'd gift $5,000 to the winner. So at the time, my art was selling a lot and I thought, well, I wanted to put money back into it, but I just didn't want to gift it to another charity to do whatever with. Yeah. I wanted to actually hand it to somebody. So to an it artist. Quite nice, you know? Yeah. And we did People's Choice as well. And then it was during Fringe time, so it was part of the Fringe program. And basically I wanted – I always showed it in places that were general public places so easy for anyone at any time to go and have a look really so yep. uh so yeah i think i started off at the convention center for a couple of years and then went to the festival theater i've been so village for a couple of years and then there was another one anyway so yeah i ran for five years and then the last couple of years was super hard for me to get that money together yeah and um so i sort of so you I sit did. there and go, hey, I literally hey, had I no to... money and yeah. I'd be like, hopefully oh. I'll sell an artwork so I can give this money so to somebody. Money and then I was just like, no, nah, I can't afford to run it anymore. So I gave it a hiatus and I tried to find sponsors and no one was really sponsoring at the time. It's super hard to get the money together for it. And so I've just let it sit there. And then I was going to run it with Sala this year. So it was going to be a, I was going to make a biannual prize yep. and change it to Sala, make it part of the Sala program rather than the Fringe because... The Fringe Visual Arts so Sala, was really dropping Sala off. People stands weren't for you. South Australian Living Artists, all right. which is um, the, all run in August every year. Yep. And anyone can exhibit anything during that time. So you, even though you feel like you can't do anything or draw or anything, you could exhibit during this Thank, time as um, part thanks of for that. South Australian <laughs> Living Artists. Thanks for that um, optimism. Festival, so, <laughs> so whereabouts is that held? Wherever you want to put, put your artwork, you can put it in a cafe, you put it in Drake's, you could have one here. Why are you having one? Oh, my God, seriously? This actually should be a thing, maybe next year. So We could do something at Wayville. Yeah, let's do it next year. Think about it. And then you can gather some artists together or gather your, your graffiti buddies, get them to do things. They could do a live performance piece like Paint a Wall as part of Sala. People come and watch. They love it. It's great. We we originally. I can't believe you don't know about Sala. No. My I, goodness. I don't. Okay. I feel, all right. Like, like now I do. But it's been running for like twenty years. It's been so we we had more. a um when we were building Wavell mm. we had a section at the front of the store where we left it open for freestyle art so you, anyone can come in and do a piece. Yeah. And that was just going to be ongoing, like a paint. Like a layered kind of thing. Yeah, or like they do their just piece and we it. can put it somewhere. Oh, okay. No, yeah. like we give them the space. Yeah. But my boss canned it. But okay. We, we thought it was a cool idea. It's like, a cool but idea. I, I was worried but about... Do you know the Peace Project? Like, um, yeah, okay. So like that's similar in a way, isn't it? But that runs yeah, during Sala. He runs that for Sala. So it's going to be straight in the supermarket. Yeah. So... And people are like, oh, what's the tie-up of... And I said, oh, it gives them a place to come and 
draw or paint or spray. Yeah. However they want to do it. People can watch it. It's good to watch art. Except for the spray, it's not great. You know the what? Supermarket, yeah, that, that was the only thing. Yeah, but that maybe I just do no spray. Yeah. Well, uh, have a think about it. You've got a year. Do yeah. something for Sala next right. year. Be so, inspired. So I, I need it's very someone important. to. Support South Australian artists. No, 100%. Yeah. Because it's a tough gig, no matter what it way is. you look at it. Correct. Yeah. Um, it's a numbers game as well. And, you know, we have unbelievable car collections in Adelaide. There's no doubt. But. When you compare to the, you know, 20 million people living in New York or something like that, you can see why people gravitate to more people looking at art, more chance of selling art. Um, look, it. I actually oh. think that it's a hereditary thing. So if you look at Melbourne, Melbourne buys more art than Adelaide and the reason being is they've been brought up with more art surrounding them. Like I was brought up with posters around me of cars and Grand Prix stuff, you know. Lamborghini Countach. Maybe like, you know, the token Renoir reprint or like poster from some gallery or something. Was nothing. There was nothing that was bought. Actually, there's one piece. It was an Aboriginal piece that we, we got when we went to Alice Springs. So other than that, there wasn't like, you know, it wasn't, perceive that we would have to go and buy or that it would just be a normal thing to buy out and purchase it and put it on your wall, right? Whereas in Melbourne, there's a lot of people that do that. And I guess it sort of comes from a little bit of money. Yeah. People with a little bit of money, that heritage, like the old Adelaide. Yeah, a bit more people as well. That Sure, but like they're brought up around it, so therefore it's you do go to a gallery and buy a piece of art. Whereas I think galleries in the past have also been like – scary places for normal people to go into it's like oh well, am i welcome there or like you know do i yeah, feel comfortable I, yeah. in that kind of place i don't know so i mean i used to love going to gallery openings back in the day but you know do you do it now what gallery oh like do you go to not new so exhibition? much anymore like i wish i did but i do just they, do don't. they not invite you as a special guest no it just you don't have to be a special guest you can just go but like premiere night no, yeah, I don't know. I used to go. I used to go every launch at the drop of a hat, babe. But I'm pretty freaking over the launches, to be honest. I'd rather go when there's no one there and you can just enjoy the work as its own thing. Uh, but life gets in the way. Things are busy. Blah blah. blah. I mean, I'm sure that's you know. I had a gallery in North Adelaide, and you know, it was there for five years, and then. You know, I'd see someone after I've closed, and I'm like, oh, I always meant to go there. I'm like, for five years, you meant to go there. You know, like. Don't say it. Seriously, just don't say it. <laughs> yeah, just just actually do it because there's no Yeah, artist. like if you want to go, you'll be there. So anyway, look, yeah. So I used to, yeah, of course I used to go to all the galleries. So so with with your pieces, mm. if someone wanted to buy one yes. right now, yes. what would be, let's say COVID wanted to buy a piece, uni student, like, you know, he tells us how much money he's got, but let's just say, you know, not into art or wants to wants to buy a piece. So, what's what's the sort of entry where he gets a chance to get a piece and goes of up in mine value or better than better than buying Bitcoin? What are we talking about? Yours. No, I'm talking way. about yours. Right. Yeah. Um, okay. What what's a chance to get in? At, at like yeah, entry a, level uh, like five grand or something. I'm guessing. I, I'm no, totally, I'm, so I'm, no, I'm I actually have I'm this totally wicked guessing. deal. I, don't know, I, I could say something no, of five I do this, you go, Okay, so I do this wicked deal and I do it a couple <laughs> of times a year. Oh, God. Uh, so this year I've done it twice already. I may do it coming up to Christmas just because the market is a lower price point at the moment. Yep. So what I do is I offer a piece, if you would like to purchase it, um, that is uh, just under 500, so it's 490. It comes, it's about this big, so it's a decent, it's about the same size as that. Are you kidding? Well, yeah. We're buying one now. You can't because they're not available. Oh. But I'll let you know when they will be. <laughs> it's not a good promotion if it's not available at the moment, is it? No, but this is how it works. Yeah, Can I just, tell you how sorry, it works? Sorry, sorry, it's sorry. available for a certain amount of time. So it's yeah. available from here to here. On this date, it's sold out. So however many sell between here and here okay. is the addition number. Right. That, right. So that's that. So it's not as exclusive. Well, but it it's can an be. If not level. many people buy it. My last one was only fifty, but my <gasps> biggest one was about eighty-nine. Does it so, come in lilac? And that's still good. I have lilac in my work. Okay. Uh, here, might match these guys are matchy matchy might today. Matches, uh, yeah, yeah these two are matching. Both. Lovely. <laughs> Don't pay him out about his lilac. I, like, I think it's cute. gorgeous. I like it. No, yeah. I love it. I love it. Don't worry, he's picking up. Yeah. Yeah, he is. <laughs> he's yeah, sorted. I'm past that. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> you have your gorgeous wife on the wall. You're fine. <laughs> A lot of the mates are going, geez, you've put the bar fucking high, haven't you? <laughs> sorry. So, yes. you, you so get, that's yeah. a chance. So, so yeah, you, that's, you can't. And then you can also pay it off lay by. So, really? Yeah, I'm fine with it, whatever. Because when I bought works in the beginning, I could never afford 
Yeah, that's that the difference. Of money like, if I, I'm an early collector, so you just talk to me and pay me regularly, and I'm fine with it. It's okay. So some people are still paying off from like one bit of guinea of the year because of COVID thing. Yeah, and so it's fine. It's just sitting there waiting for them when they finish paying it off. So as long as they talk to me, I'm okay with it. You know, it's fine. Are, you, are your fans so? But if I wanted a like your limited release. Yeah. Um, pieces. Yeah. 5K. Yeah, they start like, about 5'2 and they go up to. And what size ish. is that? 5'2 uh, is uh, 70 by 70. Yeah. And then uh, the $8,000 ones are about 120 and by 90 or is that 110 framed? by 110. Yeah, that, yeah. Yep. sounds framed. As you see it, you should have a piece. Yeah, no, we'll, no. I'm saying we'll get a piece. Am I selling you we'll a piece today? Something. That's what we're we're going to get Cutting something. It? We need to cut a deal. Yeah, we, we'll get something because I think your your work's amazing. Like yeah, it, it is, and it, it really it, it is. It's not like oh, hang on, you're South Australian. It's like your pieces are when you see them, you go, oh yeah, that's yeah. That's, but you have to find a piece that talks to you though. So correct, and that that's so that that's might a take part. A You've while. got. You never know. I don't know how many you got on your website, but there's at least a thousand pieces. Uh, there's a lot of work. There's a right? lot of there's a yeah. lot of work. I was quite prolific earlier on in my career because oh. I was finding my finding my place where I sort of yeah finding but, my stuff that looked like my work, I guess, like uh, that you would look at it and go, "Oh, that's Emma Emma Hack's work," you know. I think you do that. Um, I think people self aware people naturally do it as they go through life. I think as well. It's not it's not like you're trying to create a place. You just oh, yes, yeah, is where I sit, and I'm comfortable with that. Yeah. How many people are like that, though? No, I don't, no, not no. everyone. I'm, I think one I think of the biggest hard. traits that you can have is being aware, self-aware of where you're at. Most yeah. people don't get that luxury, and that's why I'd say to people working for us, it's like, oh, you know, they I might not be happy. it's a continuous kind of question in a way, isn't it? Yeah. It's like a reset. You it is reset like a reset. You work but, out where you're at and what you're doing. And I think you just have to be happy and enjoy what you're doing. Yeah. And Well, that's the goal. Uh, and if you can do that, whether it's a side hustle, like, you know, we've got plenty of people that on the side are selling, you know, selling things like doing websites that are being accountants on the side that, you, you know, they're doing something. But in the end, you've got to weigh up. I want to earn this amount of money because that's enough to get me through and be happy. Or I want to earn this amount of money but be miserable. Like, you need to work out where the scale sits for you yeah. to hopefully one day that I say to everyone here, I, I don't I don't force you to come to work. Like you come to work, you are paid for what you do. If you don't enjoy it, don't work here. Yeah. And some people find that a little bit confronting, but the reality is I want people working here that enjoy what they're doing. Yeah, and sure. And it's a philosophy, obviously, that you... You know, we're trying to get down the line because back in the day they go, oh, I'm at McDonald's, Um, you know, that they look us just above McDonald's. And I'm like, McDonald's have some of the best training schedules that on the planet. Mm. And yeah. Learning that discipline and getting Facebook, like when I was doing um, Pizza Hut, I love working there. You know, it's a great place. I actually really enjoyed it. It was uh, fun. Until Melt came along. Melt piece. Oh, my oh, God. That was God. many years oh, later. Lost in the forest. Oh, my God. I okay, this. so that's Nick's place. That's Nick's part owner in that place. Oh. All right. Really? Yes, yes, yes. Well, see, I, I had, <laughs> so yes, you want to love know. this? Yeah. I had my girl's joint birthday there. Ah. And you want to hear a funny story? This, now this is funny. We had, we were there. <laughs> yeah, okay, we hired this spot. Um, Nat got a busker in. She called off the street. Really good singer, this young kid, <coughs> and good. and got him in. And then we had to yeah, well, a lot of pizzas. Just keep them coming until we can't eat anymore. And they have the bit lost in the forest. They're I, beautiful. I'm rating number one pizza joint in Adelaide. Yeah. Right. And I went in there, Nat, and had a few drinks. Oh yeah, just and and the, they had prices on the wall for the bottles of wine. He goes, oh, you got a few magnums. So, yeah, you just take the magnums and. I was looking at the prices per glass <laughs> and I go, fuck, that's, the wine here is so cheap. Like, I was like, nah, can't Oh, you look at per glass. You think it's the bottle. <laughs> oh, my God. We got $200 to the- bottles for <laughs> there, right? We got, to, we got to the end and the bill was, I was like, 
fuck? Yeah. I said, Nat, we haven't drunk that much. And they go, they, they sit and they go, <laughs> they, they would have thought, no, they, yeah, these guys <laughs> drinking everything. They <laughs> are like, they, because no one drinks at young kids' birthdays, ours they do. Uh, and, and my that, friends do. <laughs> and, that, and they turn around and go, man, you realise those prices, they're by the glass. And I was like, holy shit. It was with thousands. It was thousands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was a great time. And the moral, so of, the, coming, moral of the story <laughs> is uh, we, bought, we bought their last two magnums, took them home, kept them for uh, our, Okay, kept, so you're like, oh, we'll just kept, buy more. <laughs> kept them for our Christmas. And yeah. it was a really good of time. Mm. And what are we talking about? Pizza. Uh, it was a really good time. We were talking about Pizza Hut and then we ended the up pizza, in Austin Forest. But the pizza is so good. Yeah, and it's good. If you haven't been there, everybody go. Yeah, you are right like across the road yeah, from the road. It's super nice. Pub. You can go and sit in the lawn outside and have a little uh, pizza uh, picnic, take your dog, yeah. happy days. Anyway, <laughs> and that's pizza. Don't get me some pizza because I love it. I try to keep away from it. But anyway. Oh, look. All right. So uh, we have some serious questions. <laughs> yeah. I know it's hard to are there more? Are there more? <laughs> yeah, this, these are our wrap up questions. Oh, okay. And we ask everyone the same. Uh, oh, okay. This is this is the range of the finale. This is the finale. Okay. Yeah, I hate to tell you, you've been on for two hours. Oh, there you I know go. it's gone like twenty seconds. Just you does. haven't had a drink. No, I've, I've like look. Yeah. I haven't eaten something because I don't want you in the microphone. But yeah, you just afterwards. have to hold. You can do it up. Yeah. So these are so if you like if um if you weren't doing what you're doing now. Which is obviously Which president of the dog's <laughs> of your Bernese dog and yeah. the hills. And if, if you weren't doing what you're doing now and money wasn't an option, mm. like it could, you, you know, you, let's just say you had more money than you could ever spend. You could, if you weren't doing what you're doing now, what do you think you would be doing? Um, I don't know. Like I think because the dog things, like in the training with the dogs is like the new thing in yep. a way. Like I think that's what I'd probably be doing. Well, it is actually because training dogs, you don't make any money. So I'll be surviving that my art sales yep. doing something that I enjoy that doing. That you love yeah, doing. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. But something to do with animal behaviour or working in a sanctuary or something fun like that. You love Some your environmental stuff. Yeah. Mm, yeah, I mean, look, of course, you know, I believe in looking after the environment and stuff like that. I just love animals and I find it really interesting, you know, um, yeah, the training side of it is pretty cool. Okay. Um, if there's someone like a, you know, a 14-year-old Emma Hack out there or a 16, God help, God help them. Because <laughs> um, um, yeah, um, I was yeah. terrible at that age, to be quite um, honest with you. I was yeah, so very God, naughty. God help them. I've got all that to look forward yeah. to. That's my mates have all said, lucky you got two beautiful girls, mate. Good luck. <laughs> um, what do you wish, what do you wish, like if, if, what do you wish you'd known when you first started out in the career you're doing and what advice could you be giving to someone that wants to come into this industry that you're in now? Oh, God. So um, you have to, you know, kind yeah. of sort of. So the advice I give to myself is just be you, which I was anyway. I was very headstrong. It's a bloody nightmare. So I'd probably give myself, I'd probably have more balls then than I do now. So I'm just going to say nothing to myself and just go for it and yep. just do whatever you dream of, which was what I was doing. And I think, though, for other kids nowadays, what, if they want to be an artist? Yeah. Yeah, they want to. Because <sighs> yeah, it's tough. Well, you can Like, look, no matter what way you look at find it. Find your point of difference. Find the something that you do that nobody else does or find a way that you do something that nobody else does. Don't copy anyone. Don't recreate anything. Find something new. Find something that is what, how will you be noticed. And then work out whether you want to be accepted by the museums and the curators and all that kind of stuff. And if you do, then go to art school and go get yourself a really great gallerist from the get-go. If you're excellent, you will. And if you don't go to art school and you want to be self-made, then you can be self-made. That's possible, so which is what I've done. So there's much. two totally separate. They're really separate. And don't try and cross it because it just doesn't work. Do you think that, <laughs> yeah, so do you think yeah. that having the schooling, uni, arts, do you think that is valuable? Is, is uh, Yeah, uh, of course it's valuable. So they're looking it's for that? It's valuable for a certain type of artist as well. Like 
I don't know. My work, would, I probably wouldn't even do what I do if I'd gone to that. And this is the conversation I have with artists all the time. So I think, oh, should I have studied? Like it's always a question. Should I have studied and gone through the traditional way of being an artist? Um, but I don't think I, w- I would have done what I've done. Like I don't think I would have been a body painter at all. Yeah. Yeah, totally. And you therefore would've... I probably wouldn't be wouldn't have had all the things. So having the naivety of just creating what I felt like whenever I felt like without judgment in the beginning was part of, you know, I guess where I am now. But also why I'm not necessarily accepted by the institutions. So yeah, it's a it's I, a really I, I, give and takey kind of weird land to be in. So yeah. But if there's a kid that's really great at painting, then he just he or she just needs to make up their mind of which direction they want to go in. But nowadays with the internet, you can do whatever. You can, huh? Yeah. It's yeah. a bit different. Yeah, and you can run your own life. And the thing is with gallerists back in the day, the gallerists would lead the artists through all their collections like, and help instruct them with advice of what they should and shouldn't do, what they will and won't paint, all the things, right? So that was a really mentor-based, strong relationship. But that's dissolving now because yeah. the whole industry is super hard. Um, like, yeah, the market is just really different now because of social media and artists are now starting to do their own thing. So I'd probably say do your own thing. But I think study, study your craft. If it's not, if you don't go study, then become a master of your craft before you, intro- like I was body painting for 10 years before I even had an exhibition, my first calendar, right? 10 don't, years. Yeah, don't just think you're an artist tomorrow and try and have an exhibition. Like really, it's called an art practice. Practice your art, then go and show what you want to show. Yeah. Yeah, that's. Don't just go. That's oh, the such good advice you know, because I like the whole wham bam. Thank you, you know, man. yeah, yeah that uh, sort of five minutes of fame uh, kind of thing can be very. That I can think also destroy you overnight. And I think you've hit the nail on the head because a lot of um, maybe younger people coming through think it's instant. Well, and life is instant for them. Look how fast everything is. They've got like an eight-second response to things. On I think it's even less now. It was eight seconds three, about two three, years ago. Three seconds is when Facebook starts charging. 2014, it was eight seconds. Yeah, well, It's there you three go. seconds now where you get charged. Yeah, well, there you go. So, view. like, that's, that's, that's the attention that you must get before they swipe to the next thing yeah. or look through, like, or even probably we do it now to a certain degree as well. So, yeah, everything has to be fast nowadays, but it doesn't, like, especially art. Oh, you just say now, my my. I, I think unless you're professing at something or you know a brain surgeon or something where you need that extra intel, I think with the internet well, they now, they practice a lot too. Well, yeah, I know. <laughs> you I, want I, them to I, before they operate. To, on your brain. Correct, <laughs> but but with the internet and YouTube and being able to sell your story and showcase what you do, you can technically do that, like now. At the age of whatever, correct. You can, if, you, if you know, you how, work to, out you know how, to how to work it, record yeah, my phone is enough to to figure it out now. And it's yeah, it's scary. I, I I look at what my girls will be doing. It's scary, I, but it, there are it makes things a lot more accessible if if they're smart about the how they go about it. So totally. Just plan it. Just plan easier it. said than done to plan. I know. So, I know. So I, I, <laughs> I'm one I, of them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, did have you seen the documentary on Netflix? Um, catching up the listers, I think it's yeah, called. Yeah, yeah, I that, loved it. That that to me, that brutally shows how tough it is being in the industry, and yes. how it also it, got, it shows a lot. It shows how you have to suck up a lot, and you have to change your sort of way that you maybe believe that you are to to accommodate to get your pieces sold and you know you see that but I don't see anything with female artists why is that so because our celebrated artists are mostly men and um, if you walk into any gallery you'll see that there'll be a larger percentage of men featured or represented than females and this happens like, and has happened for many years and it's something that female artists are trying to write. Um, with my actual art prize, the percentage of entrance for females was about 65 to 70%. And with the finalists, you'll notice in most of them, 
uh, 65 to 70 percent females that rep- is represented in my finalists. Okay. Yep. To get that, I had to have myself as a judge, and I'd always have a female and another male. Yep. If I had two males, I'd never get an equal uh, equilibrium of what should be. Like if you've got 100% of people entering, about 70 or 80% of females, and then you've got 20 or 30% in the finalists, it doesn't. It's not right, right? Yeah. But that happens in most art prizes. That's normal in most art prizes. It's normal in most galleries. Is, do they so know the when sex? you look at Anthony's story, yeah. is what yeah. I'm saying to you is that look hard, but women don't even get to walk through that bloody door. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So there's like, it's really unbalanced. I mean, look, it's unbal- unbalanced in life anyway. Like, here we are. Um, you know, women are underpaid, you know, especially as artists, we're underpaid much more. Um, the men are celebrated a lot more. So it's something that needs to really change. Um, and there's, you know, I don't think great artists come from male or female. It comes from the person. Yep. So um, that's what's really kind of important, I think. So when I we had Flavia in here from Fleet, yeah. and she's a rocket scientist. She's very cool. Mm. Italian, quite zany. Definitely didn't mind drinking. And and she goes I and does, had she, one she, I know. Well, that what's Emma wrong she with didn't Emma? Drink anything. Uh, uh, and and um, she was very particular. Every month, she goes and spends time in an all girl school. And talking to girls about, hey, you can do it, you can do it, yeah. you can do it, you can do it. And seeing her, I've been at a couple of parties where her kids have been there, it, she gives them that um, you can do it attitude, yeah. regardless if you're male or female. But we, we are in a male-dominated world. Do you think that it's getting better um, where it could be more equal? Um, or, I think people are talking about it. But, but I not think, doing it. Look, I think, I think, to be honest, like from what I see is that it's creating more of a divide with the women that are standing up, unfortunately. I think that men, there's particular, you know, parts of society that are uncomfortable with that and so then they're getting riled up about it when really they shouldn't be riled up about it. They should just be like, okay, cool, let's all just live together and, like, just do shit equally, you know. But um, I feel like they maybe feel like something's being taken away from them and really it was never theirs to begin with. So I think, but, you know, I mean, this is society in the way that society's sort of been built around, you know, the male and female and what, what their purpose is. Uh, so, yeah, uh, well, it's I've... a big thing to change and I'm, I'm hoping that it continues to change. But I think like everything at the moment, everything's kind of bumping together and yeah. reverberating it, so much, like even the Black Lives Matter and then, you know, discussing whether all lives matter or black lives You know, it's just, come on, just let's just fucking be nice. Yeah. Like, if <laughs> it's, we, it's good. Be a nice person. Be good. Treat people equally. You know, be respectful. And everything will be awesome. I, and that's as like a simple don't way to threatened. look at it. I, I think for, for for me, I don't know. I think everyone's a bit different, and you know, we, we I, I get scared when I see examples on on a board position where oh, we need to equalize the board with women to equalize it. I, I think everyone, no matter what board you're on, it, it needs you need to be there because of what you've got to offer. Sure. And I say that. And they go, yeah, that's a simplistic way of looking at it where sometimes the the females haven't had that chance to no, offer exactly. to get so, to that position. Yeah. And it's like, you know what, you sit there and go, you know what, that's right. And we need, and especially I see myself as a leader and uh, I'm old, I think I'm old, but a, a young leader coming through, we need to empower who, who whoever we can and understand that, you know, if, if if ladies aren't having babies or if they aren't doing that, then a population doesn't grow. <laughs> yeah. The end. And that needs to be understood. Not not the fact that of disciplined against, oh well, you know, that person's gonna have babies. Like we need to embrace that and we need to be doing everything that we can to be able to let everyone grow so the best people for the best part of the role can do that. And sure. and I'm speaking a little bit naive illy. <laughs> about our industry because we it's a brutal industry being a manager on the front it, it's it's tough and yeah. you cop it all all the time left right and center the hours have got a lot better now than they ever used to be but it's becoming a better place to work 
And we need to understand that of every profession. And I think everyone needs to understand that people should be there in their own right. And the fact that they don't get their foot in the door with art, because there are some industries, I mean, you know, a heavy, you know, a weightlifter or something, you know, that's clearly strength orientated, but you got to get your foot in the door first and it's got to be on an even playing field. Yeah, sure. But I think also like, you know, coming back to the board situation that you were talking about before, I think that you should have a varied amount. And where you say like, yes, there needs to be more females on the board. Yes, well, and not just any female coming in just because they're a female, yeah. but there are people that are qualified for, to be, to take that position and be the female that needs to be on that board. Maybe a couple of females, maybe, maybe yeah. somebody of color, maybe whatever. So I think those places need to be set and then you find the best people for those places. Yeah, not because totally. there's a better person over there that could take that place, but yeah. because those places need to be set. Yeah. And that's, that, that's the way it should be. And with us, that's we haven't done that in the past. No. And I don't think any I yeah. don't think ever, anyone has. Uh, You've just gone and got, you know. And I'm quite happily, you know, it, it's not that we haven't wanted to. It just hasn't happened in the past where you're saying, that's right, you're saying set because all of our positions, except for a few, have come from the shop floor up. And if you don't have those positions coming up, it's a... We, you know, I think we're a bit closed door of letting someone come into the business that hasn't grown. Yeah. And you're right. It's it's as simple as setting the foundations so everyone's being given that So opportunity. you're representing ev- like, yeah. a, a f- like fluid and, society of yeah. this, 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 this. And it, that doesn't happen like that. Um, I reckon it could. Why couldn't it? Because the skills that you learn from being in retail and whatnot. For me, it... it well, it, sure, if, like maybe it, for, for your me, business, you like to have a few years under yeah, the bill. Yeah, for, for me as in retail, but as an but artist... But then for doing that, then would you go, okay, now I'm going to hire this particular type of person so I can bring that in in the next couple of years? Yes. Yeah, good. Yes, right. and, and I think we're more than open. And I think, you know, you go back a while, maybe not so much. Mm-hmm. Um through no fault. So maybe society is changing then. Yeah. You I'd, know, maybe that is that change yeah. that you're talking about. Because you've started looking at it in your business, that's a good thing, right? Uh, yeah. And I think I'm definitely in that field of, hey, we're all we're all one. It sounds a bit corny, but it it shouldn't matter whether you're, you know, you're bi, trans, whatever. It's, yeah. Or male, but female. But you and I, we, are, and we just come from like this this white heritage Correct. so we've always had that yep. to be like you know yep. honest yep. so it's very hard to look from somebody else's point of view when you've always had these opportunities oh. that have always been given to you do you know what i mean oh, tra- so now tra- we're getting tra- really tra- stuck tra- into it trust but i mean me. i, I mean, can't I've put myself so- in the place of you know no, even people I- that have just entered our country like how can i put myself in that place when i've been offered everything pretty much except for things like obviously female related i've been held back for a few things because of that or just seen as a ditz because I'm blonde and buxom or whatever. Yeah. There, there's things that sort of sit yeah, there. I, but, yeah, I think in general, like, we don't know. No, how can, how and can we know? trust me, I, I've had um, many conversations where you don't know. You've come from white privilege and yeah. I get it, but I can't help that. But, no, you can't help that, but, but you can listen, I guess. No, and yeah. I think one of my real strong points is being able to listen Yeah, and being able to use my... Um, my position to make a difference. And if I can on a small, small tangent, and that's the for the better because that's what I totally believe in, which it is, then yeah. we need to make sure that we're doing that. And that's yeah, and that, you make those places available then. That's what I mean. That yeah, doesn't happen overnight. Yeah. But, yeah, it's tricky. But it's training. But like, yeah. As long as you're aware of it and you're making a change, making changes, whether they're slow or what, that's a good thing. Yeah. But it would be nice, you know, you said like, well, has it changed? Well, it's not going to change, as you said, overnight, you know, all yeah. that kind of stuff. There's a lot that needs to break down, a lot of the old mentality. And all the old, like this, like especially in the art world, it's full of... Old money. It's old money and old people with money and yeah. that old thought. So until maybe even younger than me come up, maybe. It, yeah, it, it's a totally it, different you know, set it's of still eyes. 30 like 30 years I, away when you think about I, it. I can't imagine looking at a piece and going, fuck, I love that. And then finding out it's a female and being like, oh, I'm sure I made it. Like, uh, uh, it doesn't even cross my mind. Like, uh, 
that that's why I struggle to like understand what it's like. But but you know, all the artists that you've spoken about have been men. Yeah, right? correct. Because they're the exactly, ones. Exactly. Yeah, because they're the ones that have had the opportunity to get out there, right? Totally. So voila. That's and yeah. in fact, you talk about okay, female artists. I'm like, I don't know. I just look at that piece of guy. Yeah, I like that and yeah. talk yeah. about it. Yeah. It's bizarre. But also, you'll and they're find, all like, like, like that Van relate. Gogh. They're like you, you sit there and go, Michael. Well, Angela. especially with the super old. Ones. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like. Well, women weren't painters then, but they were. And a lot of their yeah, see, a lot of their partners were painters and amazing painters. So, yeah. So it's it's mind blowing that you're absolutely yeah, right. Muse. And unconsciously, I've made a decision because of that's what I've seen. I like that, or people talk about yeah. that. So. But also, the other thing is, you might like masculine looking art, and you'll find in general that will come from a male. To generalize, I'm sure there's masculine art done by females as well. So yeah. So therefore, you would recognise male artists if that's what they're painting. That's what you're attracted to, correct? Yeah. Can I tell you a story? Yeah, go on. So our old Drake's logo was um, block, capital, Drake's, right? And our senior exec, oh, there's nothing wrong with that. Like, no, it's Drake's. It's what they've had forever. Right. And we were like, we went through a stage of, we, you know, we'll probably be leaving the Foodland group. Uh, we need to, let's do a bit of a logo design. So we sat down and went through and had a look at all the logos and, and we had five different logos to choose from. And the bold Drake is very masculine. Like yeah. it's like, boom, it's yeah. like boom, Drake's. And then the our new logo, which I can't see, but, you know. Uh, here, like we went lowercase. Oh, yeah. yeah. So we went full lowercase, put the dot, lot softer, and the, co- the 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 amount of compliments we got from females that they'd noticed the difference. And that, I would have thought, well, who noticed there's a difference? But something is. Women s- notice a lot of differences correct. about everything. <laughs> oh, tell, tell, tell me that. But it's something that simple. Mm. Just shows you the difference of you know something that simple because we did have the D in a lowercase oh. D as well. Yeah. And um, when you looked at it, it just didn't look. No, as... that would downplay it too much. I think also like you know I mean who's shopping? Yeah, yeah. What well, percentage? Oh, what percentage of your shoppers? So we, we what are we what are we talking about here? Where's your money? So the kids. So, <laughs> so the kids. From? I call it the kids, but the yeah. the new crew coming through presented it, and and to the credit of the of our senior exec, they took it on board and totally understood and they could see it once presented. But if that wasn't presented in that way, I don't think they, they would have noticed. And, mate, they're very, you know, our exec team's awesome, but I don't think it would have been picked up just for the simple fact is that unless it's presented like that way, people don't pick it up. And, yeah. and that was for us one of the big turning points for our business is like, you know, we, we've got to get our shit together. And a small... Small example is changing yeah. the logo changes the per- perception of, yeah. your, of your business. Yeah, And definitely. hence why I think, you know, we, we definitely get a whole, we're getting a younger crowd, we're getting more people shopping with us since changing to Drake's and it's been amazing. And I I, I don't want to, the, the journey of having a equal, should be equal on whatever you've got to present and we need to be making sure that the pathways are open for them and, yeah, I've never looked at it in regards to art, but you saying it now, you're right. They're all, well, it's, they're, in every, it's honestly every business, there, really. And it's crazy. So I, Flavia was the first one that hit it home to me. It was like, no, I only talk to the girls. And she was very like, I only talk to the girls because the boys don't need any more help. And it was like, she was so bang on. Mm. And since that, and that was probably over a year ago now, I don't know how long ago Flavia was, but it's hit home that, you know what, she's right. And, you know, father of two young girls, I want things to be equal for them as long as they're good enough. and But that won't happen unless the pathways are laid. And yeah. it's exactly the same with what you're talking about. Yeah. My um, niece actually wants to get into that the program that's happening here as well. Oh, the mate, space program. Uh, well, She's like so keen. Hook, hook, and it's great. You hook know? hook me up because we know someone that's doing yeah, stuff in this so space. She's so gutsy. She's just like, yeah, that's what I want to do. And it's not considered that in her mind that she's – can't do that, which is really nice. Because you should so be I, I, bring I'm, on the young ones. I yeah, say, I'm, I'm with you, and I, I'm, my old, my whole. Hopefully, life. they'll do a better job than us. Well, <laughs> well, that, that's their job, isn't it? But the reality <laughs> is, you know, I guess I never got told I couldn't do something from my old man. Yeah, and I still have that attitude that anything is possible. You just got to put your mind to it, and uh, I think uh, we've all got a part to play, and we need to play it. Yeah, absolutely. 
if if there was one thing that you could do that impacted the world, oh, what would it be? God, these questions are terrible. Yeah, I know. That's oh. why I'm I'm a far like, you know, let's open up an art school. Um, tell people it'd be all right. Nah. You know, open up a dog school. <laughs> for no, Bernie's, that won't, that for won't make the world dog. better. Yeah. That won't make the world better. It, it, I don't know. It's like, a bit what, of a we'll make the world better at the moment. Like it's pretty freaking full on. Maybe yeah. I'd just like, you know, I'd nah. I, I don't think anything will make the world better at the moment, <laughs> unfortunately. It's not one thing that you can do. I know it sounds really cynical. I'm going to take that. I am an optimist at I, heart, I have to say, but there, I just not. Nah. I'm a massive optimist and I'll take that. Yeah. That's fine because it's mm. it's what That's the a, media is portraying as what's happening right now is destroying the economy. Yeah, well, it, everything. Well, everything. Just, yeah. yeah, the economy is the start that meant before tricky. people... You know, before we start going into mental health issues and a whole like shit show that's about to come. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's frightening. Um, yeah, it is. So being positive is <laughs> fucking hell. I just be positive. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. I, 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 I Maybe I'd from- have like you know six months ago I might have had a different answer, but I'd, yeah, I don't know. But but in saying that, I don't know if I actually would have because I don't think that any one thing can really change the world. To be honest, I, but lots of small things can change the world. Correct, and this is the most hard-hitting question we have. Oh, my God, there's more. There's more. <laughs> um, if you died yes, and came back... On an island? ...as a board game, <laughs> what would the board game be that best describes oh Emma God. Hack's life and why you, think, why you think about it? Okay. Do you want me to tell your mind? Does everyone say Monopoly or something? No, no, <laughs> no, no, no one's, one said Monopoly. No, no one said. So I say snakes and ladders. It's common. Is that common? Well, it's ups and downs. You're bang on. Like there's like nothing Darren, else. Like Darren Thomas. Oh, actually, I think I referenced that because yeah, I saw snakes, that there, and yeah. I now, re- yeah, now so realise da- that was Darren in my head. Darren went snakes and ladders. Or go fish. <laughs> Has anyone said go fish? <laughs> I love go, sh- go fish for Noah's like Go it. fish. Hang on. I'm so excited. What is this? You don't know what go you, fish? What the heck? The card, it's yeah. like where you max, you just match the cards. You just like, And you have to remember what the last card was and where it was. I was Scrabble. I was Scrabble. I hate Be- Scrabble. Because I, I, <laughs> Sorry, someti- no I, I, I sometimes <laughs> say stuff that's really good and I sometimes say stuff that's really bad. What about Connect Four? Oh, um, no, that sounds terrible. Do we have Connect Four? Let's not make Connect Four no, one. I, we've had, find a sex for we, We've had Connect such four. a mix. <laughs> we've had such a mixed bag. It's, I, it's been all over the place. We've had, hmm. like, the game Risk. Oh, uh, yeah. I think we've had a Trivial Pursuit. I actually bought Pandemic the other oh. like, when we were in lockdown as, as a joke. <laughs> is that, and a is freaking, that? it's hardcore. It just really confronted me <laughs> with everything. I was like, oh, really, it's not looking good, this Pandemic. <laughs> have, you, have you looked at that game? Well, don't Google it, that's nah. for sure. One of my favourites is Sequence. I quite like Sequence. Oh, yeah. No, I haven't is played it? Pandemic. Haven't you? Yeah. No. Is it cool? Well, it's a disease. Like, it's the kind of relevant. Number one disease fighting yeah. board game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, seriously, I bought it for my lockdown. It was, uh, yeah, we played it a few nights and then went, no. Nah. So there you have it. <laughs> <laughs> it's I, okay. I know what it's he'll okay. cut to. I know what he'll cut to. But, um, so there you have it. Emma Hack. <laughs> Um, such a, an amazing career. You totally undersell yourself in regards to what you've done. Um, you know, Blackwood, South Australia. I believe some of the Hilltop Hoods came from the Blackwood yeah, as well. School, in hey? fact, one of their songs, I believe, has a reference to Blackwood Foodland um, yeah, when you yeah, listen to you it. Go. I haven't met the guys, but it's funny that both. You should get them in. Yeah, I'd love to actually, yeah. but both from Blackwood. Um, we got a store in Blackwood, obviously. And seeing everything you've done, your pieces of art, they're, they're very inspirational. And I'm assuming you have many young fans as well as old that look at what you do. And we've seen what you've done and we're, we're amazed by it. And we need to make sure that your art goes up more, especially in our town in South Australia, and you need to be recognised for that. So we'll do everything we can. Aww. Glad to have met you. Um yeah, you're just revolutionary. I don't think you quite understand how much you changed the way that things have happened and you've just gone with what you believe and Thank your gut you. instinct and it's been so cool to have you. So excited. Thank Thanks. You. Next time I'll come talk about dogs. <laughs> no, I was going to say, we knew dogs was pa- it's your major passion. Um, 
so yeah, it's been awesome. It's really amazing to see what you do. It's really amazing. It's amazing work, and you really undercook it too. Like it's it's really cool. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you.